Hello, and welcome back to Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror of the card game with a focus on roleplay and storytelling. Oh, I'm out here, Flower. I'm out here. Today on Doomed, Charlie Kane continues his exploration of what it means that there are strange artifacts in this world known as keys. Who or what is the coterie? Why is the Foundation seeking these keys and this coterie? And what are these strange paradimensional identity, uh, identities, entities that he's been encountering all over the globe? And perhaps more importantly, will Charlie Kane ever get his cigar? Join us on Dune for the answers right now. Exactly, Flower. The strangest things that have ever opened a locked door. I always used a, a, a pickled herring. Well, welcome to Doomed, everybody. As always, of course, I'm going to start with um, a little sum up of where we are in the campaign, and then we're going to dive in. The Scarlet Keys is an unusual campaign by Arkham standards in that it is uh, quite specifically non-linear. Um, oh, hi, uh, PKJ Wink. Hi, Kung Fu Fenris. Welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. Um, as I was just, I was just saying, this is a very uh, non-linear campaign, which means before we get to a scenario today, we will be exploring a bit more of the globe, doing some reading, and listening to me read a whole bunch of things. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry, Flower. You must be very disappointed that Winter is not here today, unless it's hiding behind the curtain. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. I, I don't really have much to say. I had a, I've been having a fabulous time with Charlie Kane so far. Uh, it's been a great campaign, really exciting, interesting stuff. I think we've played three scenarios. Let's check. London, then we went to Istanbul, not Constantinople. And then we went on to Shanghai, where we thought there would be a scenario and there wasn't, and then across to Havana, which is where we are right now. So, three, three scenarios so far. I think we'll probably get in another two before the finale. How many places are you going to? Great question, Kung Fu Fenris. Allow me to answer that with a little bit of, not math, but just a sort of a sense here. It's currently day 16 of 35. 35 is the last day in the calendar, which I believe means we have to have finished the campaign by then in our time past. We're about halfway through. I think we can probably get another two or three scenarios in, which means we'll probably be visiting a pretty good chunk of this map. That's right, Flower, yes. I don't have Parallel Agnes with me either. Probably not going to be that good on the prediction game. Unfortunately, we are also missing a crosshair, as of this moment anyway. So perhaps Agnes is recharging her spell? Ah, yes, okay. So, Flower does make a good point. I should, I'm going to quickly review where we're at in the campaign, and then I'll quickly mention what we know about the um, current goals of Charlie Kane. So, Charlie Kane and Lee Flint uh, investigated the Red Gloved Man, uh, the strange disappearing people, objects, and memories in London. There they met, I can never remember her name, Commissioner Taylor of the Foundation, which is investigating, whoa, these strange disappearances as well. They formed a cell. Lee Flint went off to Shanghai. Uh, Charlie Kane went on to Istanbul where he managed to uh, recover one of another one of these keys. Oh, hello, the crosshair. I started a little early, the crosshair. Welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. I'm just doing a quick little sum up of where we're at in the campaign before reviewing what our current goals or objectives are for Charlie Kane. After visiting Istanbul and recovering a key for one of the Coterie members there who is now potentially on our side, um... Uh, they've uh, Charlie Kane then ventured on to Moscow. He, under he 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 learned some intel about someone he had been hunting for a long time, and then on to Shanghai, where he told Lee Flint to investigate the woman with the red parasol. Flint is working solo. Um, in Tokyo, we I j picked up some intel. I'm pretty sure, uh, and then San Fran. Ew, I don't really remember what happened there. Oh, what the shit? Oh, San Fran gave us a ticket, an expedited ticket, and then on to Havana. Havana is where we currently are. Charlie Kane went to Havana to meet another member of the Coterie, who are technically the bad guys, but it would appear the more we meet, the more it becomes clear that they are not all evil. 
They just have goals that are mysterious. Desi, Desidario, or Desi, 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 what is his name here? Let's find out. Des, Desiderio Delgado Alvarez, um, the man in the blood-soaked blood suit, uh, was, uh, it struck a deal with Charlie Kane almost immediately. Hey, uh, you know, you don't investigate this rum runner thing, maybe I'll get you a few extra cigars. Also, help me find out what the hell this paranormal business is that's taking my people, and I'll give you everything I know. Um, yes, and then, uh, so Charlie Kane did, assisted Desi, uh, Desi is now in our debt, we had a showdown between the two Desis, and we believe that we have d killed the fake one, the paranormal one. Mm. Oh, I see how it is, Flower. Okay. Probably. Um. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that's where we're at right now. In terms of what we need to do, at the end of the last scenario, I marked two time, which means I have two things to read in the campaign guide. Uh, in terms of goals from then on, we're waiting to hear from Lee Flint in Shanghai. We have to deliver some Foundation intel to Lagos. Um, and we have a Kane X Desidario ship. Let's go. And uh, we also know that in Ibor City, which is in Florida, I believe, uh, Desi has something waiting for us. But we can't get there yet. We need to let some time pass. So in order to let some time pass, my thought for Charlie Kane was to head to Lagos and drop off this foundation intel. Get it out of here. And then we'll see where we end up. Okay. Yes. But first, right, I have to read two things. So I have a beta and a sigma? I don't know. I don't know. What, Greek letters. What are they? How do they work? Let's have a look. We have to go to page 69. Nice. And start from there. Status report beta. You receive a code. I'm just diving in. I hope that's okay for everybody because we're going to have lots to read, I'm sure. You receive a coded missive from Commissioner Taylor herself. Agents, not long ago, a massive explosion occurred near the Pod Podkamnyaya Tungus Tunguska River in Siberia. It is classified as an impact event, but this is just a cover story. Our intel now indicates coterie involvement. Ah, thank you, Sai. That makes more sense, Crosby. Uh. I have reason to believe that this may be the site of one of their sanctums, perhaps even their primary safe house. You have clearance to investigate the site, but be prepared for anything. Add a cultist to the bag. Not good. We hate the cultists. In the Central Asia section of the campaign log, find Tunguska. In its spot, write 59Z. You are now allowed to travel to this location whenever you embark. Note, this will end- no, uh, wasn't it in the 20s, Flower? I think it was in the 20s. The the big explosion that was never explained, right? I might be wrong. Um, note, this will end the campaign. You may wish to investigate further before proceeding to Tunguska, be, but be wary of how much time you spend. Well, that could mean anything. Shoot. Uh, okay, so we're going to grab ourselves an extra cultist, which we are not happy about. That's okay. That's fine. That's Charlie Kane for you. Um, and then, right, and then on the map, I'm not actually going to write this down, but Tunguska is now unlocked. Yeah, literally, Flower, I love it. Cthulhu, hello! Welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. I was just summing up where Charlie Kane was at, Havana, and reading some status reports. We've just unlocked the ability to go to Tunguska in Siberia, which I, which the campaign guide seems to indicate is the end of the campaign. So we're not going to go there yet. Now, I get to read status report. Sigh. <laughs> this cutscene will take a while. I love that. As you return to your hotel, the concierge waves you down and hands you a telegram. Trail picked up, hot on her heels, stop. Meet in Hong Kong, may require aid, stop. Parasol is key, stop. This must be from Inspector Flint. Perhaps you should travel to Hong Kong and learn more if you can spare the time. In the Southeast Asia section of the campaign log, find Hong Kong. In its spot, write 50 S. You are now allowed to travel whenever you embark. I'm going to actually add these because it's 59 Z and 50 S. Um, I'm going to add them on the up here on the map. 
because I think this will be, well, not on the map, but, like, near the map. So, what did I just say? I said 59, ah, oh, shit, and 50, damn it, <laughs> I should have read closer, uh, 59Z and 50S, okay, cool. And I'll just put underneath what they are. Tongue. Oh, this is this. I mean, these are if I don't if these aren't crib notes, I don't know what is. And this is Hong Kong. So, voted most interesting scenario by you, the viewers, on Discord. Uh, Shanghai, the woman with the red parasol. We seem to be on her trail, but I have to go back to Hong Kong, which is like so far away. I do have an expedited ticket which allows me to just snap and get out of there. So the question now is, basically, Hong Kong is quite close to Tunguska at the end of the campaign. My thoughts, and speak now or forever hold your peace, my thoughts would be to head kind of in the direction of Lagos. San Juan, unfortunately, Flower, I wish. We can't stop here until unlocked, but you may pass through. Unfortunately, though, it does cost time to pass through it, so it's not free. The green ones cost no time to pass through, which is kind of cool. I think, again, that's the side scenario um, locations, so places like Arkham, Venice, Monte Carlo. I'm sure there's some others. Uh, oh, New Orleans. I couldn't see it. It's right there. So, yeah, so this is my thought, folks. I'm thinking it's not best case, necessarily, but... If we go to Lagos, like, on our way there, to drop off the intel, maybe Desi's intel will unlock something in Ybor City, we can go back. There are other scenarios around here for sure. Then, when we have basically no time left, we slap that ticket and fly us over to Hong Kong. Or at least we skip the Pacific. That's kind of my thought. So, I think that's what we're going to do. I am going to continue, and we're going to head. I don't want to go to Bermuda, to be completely honest, and it's nothing against Flower. If we can do it on the way back, I will. Yeah, well, that's true, Flower. Ugh. Okay. But I still, want to, I, I still want to go to Lagos and get rid of this Foundation Intelligence, so here's what we're going to do. Remark, ooh, Anchorage. It's way up here! Ybor City, I can't do. And then Anchorage, it's only... It's only two. Ebor, Anchorage is only two. <clears throat> what of it, Cthulhu? It's so far is the thing. And like completely, oh my God, invisible communists. Yes, Crosshair, sorry, Fallout 3. Sorry, now, now it's clicking. Fallout 3 DLC? New Vegas DLC? Three DLC, I think. God, that was good. It was like a reenactment of the war from Fallout, where you fought in Alaska, where, yeah, the invisible communists were coming over, and you got, like, an invisibility suit or whatever, yeah. Oh, I see, Cthulhu. The problem is, I don't know how I'm going to, like, justify getting there. I want to go to Lagos to get rid of this frickin' foundation intel. Mm -hmm. I see there's some folks who are interested... The best way to get there would be to go through Ybor City. Now, I know that Ybor City is the the hot Desi's safe house, and he told us don't bother for, well, he told us 20 time or whatever. I put a little marker. Actually, that one's done. I don't need that one anymore. Um, so I need to kill some, kill some time before going there. All right, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to pull it up because Charlie Kane is all about democracy. There we go. <laughs> Forgot the word briefly. Um, uh, okay, so option zero is going to be Intel delivery. Rio, Lagos, and then I'm going to write Marrakesh, question mark, because that feels like a next thing. So that's going to be option zero. Uh, option one will be... Uh, Northern Exploration uh, Bermuda Anchorage and 
we'll add in a third version. Uh, uh, help Flint! Exclamation point. Ticket. No, I wouldn't take the ticket. I wouldn't take the ticket, would I? No, I wouldn't. Um, Hong Kong. Yeah. So, uh, you can help by voting on what you think would be most interesting to see on this stream. Uh, you can use exclamation mark vote and then a space and then zero, one, or two. This is going to be fun. Whoa, flower! Oh, shit. Oh, I like this. Okay, hang on. Mm. Ah, Cthulhu, I am in Havana right now. So, kind of the opposite direction from the Intel delivery. Sorry, team, I was, I was writing out all my options. Um, and I'm just also catching up here. Flower is suggesting, I honestly think that's a pretty legit play, Flower. So that would be option one. That would be vote one. Um, because that would be to to Anchorage first. Yeah, then we could go back via Ebor and on towards Lagos. It's not bad. I like it. All right. Well, I'm gonna need a freaking tie break here, team. Or I will do it myself. <laughs> Help, Flint. Hmm. Now the real question is, do I even freaking bother? Oh, well, we would be skipping. We would be skipping Arkham, thank goodness. I, I can't go back there, Crosshair. <laughs> they threw Charlie out. I mean, he's their mayor. He's coming home to a parade, and he's just like, eh. Oh, this is a good question, Flower. How are we supposed to draw them? Just like this. The devil. <laughs> uh, classic. Okay. Oh, shit. Cthulhu's probably right. They're probably like, Charlie who? That's Charlie who for you? Devil went down to Georgia. All right, team. I'm calling it. I love it. All right. We are going to... Boop! Go to Bermuda, and then to Anchorage. I'm just marking this as done. So that is... Oh, no, sorry, what am I doing? We're going to go to Ybor. I don't think I can do anything in Ybor City until the time has passed, but it's still like one, two, three. Uh, so I'm not going to mark my three time yet. I'm going to mark one time and go to Ybor City first, and then we'll see. 52. Hope y'all like reading. <laughs> you may read this dossier at any time. Sanctum Class Yellow. Sanctum 52U is an abandoned cigar factory in Ybor City, north of McKay Bay. McKay Bay. It's a good thing the locals here are fairly welcoming and don't seem to mind you asking directions because abandoned cigar factory doesn't exactly narrow things down. I love you too. The bustling Ybor City district near Tampa is home to many such factories built and run by thousands of... Uh, no, we haven't, Cthulhu. So... I haven't, actually. Yeah, no. Uh, if you had to check each and every factory, you'd be here all week. Luckily, you have a lead just north of the bay. A quiet, run-down building uh, with an adjoining boarded-up warehouse. Uh, yeah, if you didn't know the truth, you'd think it was nothing more than an out-of-date factory from the 80s, probably filled with nothing more than dust and rats. But if you've learned anything in your travels, it's to never trust the evidence of your eyes. You cautiously approach the main entrance and attempt to open it. As you suspected, it does not budge. If this is truly a coterie sanctum, it'll be harder than that to get inside. There's no easy way in through the third story windows, so you circle around the side of the warehouse, spotting a large metal door, uh, spotting a large metal door likely used for loading goods or unloading supplies. As there is no handle or lever, you decide to knock. A moment later, a gruff voice responds from the other side. Passphrase. Check the campaign log. If you know the passphrase, and the current time is at or after Theta, proceed to the safe house too. Well, I can tell you, I know the passphrase, because we spoke to Desi, well, we saved Desi or whatever, one Desi, but it is not after Theta. So we have to skip to, which is frustrating because like, I want to be like, I, I want, yeah, I want it to be like, uh, I'm trying not to flower, it's really hard. <laughs> but, um, you know, I want to be like, oh, trust me, Desi's gonna change the passphrase in a couple days. The safe house three. 
No matter what you say, the voice on the other side of the door remains silent. Then, muffled yet distinct, you hear the telltale sound of a revolver being slowly chambered. Whoop! With that, you decide to take your leave! You'll have to return later when you know how to get in. You may return to this location later. For now, you may embark. Fine. We're taking a boat, and we're going through Arkham. We're going to go to Bermuda, 20E, and mark a time by doing so. I don't know what Bermuda has to do. The great work. The brilliant sandy beaches and azure water dazzle your senses as you arrive in Bermuda proper. Rows of brightly painted homes add to the eye-popping landscape as you travel from one corner of Bermuda Island to the others, asking locals for any possible leads on coterie activity. Check the campaign log if Tuwil Masai fled to Bermuda. Who? Uh, anyway, otherwise, skip to the Great Work 5. I'm sure that's someone that's in one of the, like, dossiers, but Charlie Kane has not encountered that name. At least not at this time. The Great Work 5. You're almost relieved when your questioning goes nowhere. The lack of coterie activity in Bermuda gives you an unlikely chance to rest and recuperate. For just a moment, you need only concern yourself with the peaceful stillness of the island. With, it, with several days remaining until your next departure, you follow the recommendation of your concierge at your hotel and take the time to explore the crystal caves up near the northern end of the island. Your guide is missing an arm. They illuminate, okay. they illuminate dancing patterns in the darkness with their flashlight as they tell you the story of how the caves were formed. Oh, found, sorry. You ask them how they lost their arm. They served in the Great War, they tell you. Sometimes peace comes at a great cost. Each investigator may begin the next scenario with an additional card in their opening hand. Chicka choo cha! Now that's a that's actually really nice. That's really really nice. You may return to Bermuda again, but only after playing another scenario. You may embark. Uh, okay, and we're gonna mark one more time as we go whoop, to Anchorage. So yeah, definitely worth taking a day off. Plus one card for a scenario, especially if this is a difficult one. Let's go to thirty three. On Thin Ice. You may read this dossier at any time. Subject description 33K, here and after Thorn. Tall, gaunt person with androgynous features and fair complexion. Prefers practical, loose-fitting clothing. Subject appears to be... Oh, hello, Saren Zero. <laughs> exactly. We grabbed his arm and an extra card. Welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. Prefers practical, loose-fitting clothing. Subject appears to be redacted. Conjectured to be far older than they appear. Subject wears a distinct red cravat around their neck, often obscuring their face. Subject possesses acute sensitivity to redacted. Coterie leverages those capabilities to locate artifacts and track movement of redacted. Numerous sightings across the globe. Okay, this, this guy is running around doing something. Guy, person. Profiled as one of the most mobile... Um, yeah, that's an interesting question, Flower. It really looks sh short, hey? Um, yeah, despite no, no, yeah, most mobile Coterie members, despite no, uh, notorious secrecy, Thorn has reputation for appraising and acquiring redacted. Analysis suggests they are amenable to business exchange and receptive to haggling. Well, that's Charlie Kane's middle name, Charlie Haggling Kane. Recent activity suggests Coterie is in a state of redacted. You and Thorn likely have similar objectives, extreme caution detected, or suggested, sorry. Thorn is likely to negotiate, but only on their terms. You've only just checked into your lodge in Anchorage when you received an unmarked package. Agents, we have lost contact with several operatives in central Alaska in recent weeks, likely due to coterie activity. One operative was looking into a possible lead, a lens with apparent paradimensional capabilities. Enclosed is the journal of prospector Rhett Landry, currently institutionalized at Morningside Sanatorium in Oregon. It's a good bet, Crosshair. But then it's drawn. If the lens is a key, acquire it at all costs. You spend a full day poring over the prospector's journal, which is mostly comprised of wildlife sketches and notes on mining. However, the final entry is chilling. October 4th, 1923. Tonight, I bury that accursed lens where I found it. I dared not commit my thoughts to the page after finding it, but I have nothing to lose now. While surveying the new branch in the mine, I found a curious lens buried in the rock. It was opaque, so not a very good lens, and emanated a beguiling light. 
Holding it made me feel special, as if I had been chosen. Looking through it, I saw incredible plants, creatures, people, structures in a strange otherworldly landscape. A world beyond our own. A world that should exist. A dark reflection of our own. A haven for lost objects, lost memories. The lens, the sable glass, is the mirror that shows the truth of this other world. Okay, tinfoil hats on, team. Charlie Kane is thinking this lens shows the dimension to which all of the lost things go, which means it can be reached. Or not go, but where they are taken. How foolish was I to think I could use the lens for my own gain. The more I looked into the other world, the more the other world looked back. By peering into the glass, I must have called something awful, nameless creature through. More and more of my fellow prospectors went missing in the woods and erased from memory. My companions, my possessions, my home, all were swallowed by the strange creature I glimpsed in the sable glass. And now when I look through it, I can see them there in that other place. The creature that stalks the woods is made of nothing, and yet it is many things, constantly shifting, ever-changing. It has the traits of many animals, like a chimera from old myths. I tried to hunt it using the sable glass, but looking at it made my head spin. After surveying the area, I set a trap and thought I killed one of its forms, a great lupine thing that howled and dissipated into nothingness. But when I returned to camp the next day, it had struck the camp. My companions had vanished from memory and space. The authorities say I should be locked up, my only hope is to set things right, to put the sable glass where I found it. Back where I found it, sorry. Perhaps then everything will be right again. Mm-hmm. Next to the journal entry is an array of dark scratches, which you had assumed were nervous scribbles. However, given Landry's account, you wonder if it isn't his attempt to sketch the creature. This one's spook- this, this scenario is spooky, team. I like it. The next day, you launch a search for any record of Mr. Landry's gold mine, starting with prospecting permissions in Anchorage City Hall and the local library. After a day of fruitless research, you cannot find an official permit or record of a mine connected to Rhett Landry. As you return to the lodge that evening, you spot a tall, willowy figure with a distinctive red cravat standing next to a packed sledge. Well met. The figure greets you with a self-satisfied smile. You must be the troublemakers everyone's talking about. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm Thorn. They extend a confident hand to shake yours. If you're here, I can only assume it is for the same reason as I. Keep a weather eye out. It's supposed to be quite cold near Fairbanks. May the best one win. Thorn winks at you, then mounts the sled. You wonder if Thorn's reference to Fairbanks was a clever misdirection or a friendly hint. After asking around the lodge, an attendant opens up about your rival's preparations. I was confused at first until it became clear they were asking about something in tribal territory. You don't need a permit to prospect out there. After some more questioning, <laughs> I probably flower. I man, some some poor schmuck in Alaska is going to have a field day. You don't need a permit to prospect out there. After some more questioning, you have a good sense of Thorn's direction and the location of the mine. Read only if an investigator has the wayfarer trait. Nope. Before you head out, you ask for directions from a local member of the tribe that owns the territory where you think the mine could be. They are wary of more meddling from outsiders, rightfully so, and also concerned for your safety given the recent trouble with prospectors on their land. You explain you aren't interested in gold, <laughs> okay, and are researching the strange case of Mr. Landry. For good measure, you show them the prospector's journal and the strange etching inside. This seems to buy you some trust, and the member offers you directions. Be especially careful crossing the rivers this time of year, they tell you. It's easy to lose your way and even easier to fall through the ice. You'll catch your death out there if you aren't careful. Oh, we're setting up a scenario, team. On thin ice. Okay. 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 Set up. Gather all the cards. Put Anchorage into... We begin play at Anchorage. Wow. The, the locations are Anchorage and Fairbanks which I believe are two cities in Alaska, which, if I know anything about Alaska, uh, are probably nowhere near each other. Uh, okay. Flower is, of course, correct as well. Winter wasn't supposed to be here today, but Flower, it's your lucky day. Teka Lee Lee, and all that. Shuffle the three Alaskan wilderness locations together face down, put each of them into play adjacent to Fairbanks, set the remaining three outer wilderness locations aside out of play. 
Oh, the three outer wilderness. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to do this because I assume that's kind of how it's going to go. Okay. Set each of the following cards out of play. Gather each decoy. Yada, yada, yada. Shuffle the remaining encounter cards. Blah, blah, blah. Check how much time has passed. Ugh. For every five time that has passed, add one doom. Antarctica. Uh-oh. 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 Rut-row. How much time has passed? 19. Not 20. So, 3 times 5 has passed. 3 doom. We fucked. Uh, you are now ready to begin. Oh, that says scenario interlude. Whoops, so I'm not going to read that. Charlie Kane is in Anchorage, hot on the trail of this thorn prospector. Hoping to get to the Sable Glass, whatever it is, before Thorn does. Let's read the agenda in the act. Agenda 1A, Lost and Forgotten. The Prospector's Journal described a horrifying predator. Some called... Oh, fuck. Charlie Kane is famously not very good at fighting things. Although I'm hoping he has a trick up his sleeve or something. Some call the thing stalking the woods a beast. Some call it a spirit. And others know it as a shapeshifter. Describing the thing seems to fill each witness with a primal, unspeakable terror. We are at three out of seven, Doom. Act 1A, Quest for the Sable Glass. Thorn may have a head start in their search for the Sable Glass, but you have something they don't. Rhett Landry's Journal. If you can reach the Prospector's gold mine before the Coterie, you may be able to keep the key out of their hands. Okay, objective. Only investigators at the condemned gold mine may spend the requisite number of clues, three, as a group to advance. We need three clues, and we need to find the condemned gold mine. No problem. Love this, by the way, the art here. There's a bunch of dudes standing around being like, hmm, what you find there? Let's have a look at our tokens here. Uh, the skulls are minus X, the number of hazard treacheries in play. This is just Edge of the Earth. Cultists are minus four. A non-weakness in your card gets set aside as a hollow. Tablets are minus two, minus five if Void Chimera is at your location. Nasty ass shit. Uh, and Elder Things are minus three if you fail. Uh, look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, it becomes a hollow. Okay. Okay, Flower Eggs Ham, warn about going left, the latest The Sassy Stable Boy. I mean, I love that for you. Oh, and of course, we haven't seen the last of the Red Gloved Man, so he's going in this rather thick encounter deck, which means I'm going to draw him first. Okay. I don't know about that, Crosshair, but I, I have been warned about going left, which is good. Anchorage bustles with excitement brought on by the gold rush. Almost every street you walk down now has a new facade under construction. The sheer number of rugged pioneer folk walking the streets makes you feel out of place in your everyday clothes. Oh, but we get to start with an additional card. Wee! Charlie Kane is here in Anchorage. Perhaps surprisingly. I think something about this sable glass calls to him. It, it's, you know, as a politician, he understands the power of being able to see things. He understands the... <laughs> uh, me neither, Saren. Um, <laughs> welcome to Doomed. <laughs> All right, let's draw our opening hand. I think that's it, eh? Yeah, let's draw our opening hand. Let's get doomed. Six cards to start. Okay. We're loving... This is combat, which I like. This is also combat, but I'm not... I don't know if I could put a gun down right away. Calling in favors on Leo is not very good, but I do like having Leo. Uh, friends in low places will get me more allies, but I just don't have the money. So let's put the Thompson back and yeah, this seems, I need money. Ooh, I want to take you to Alaska. Subscriber. Subscriber. No hey. problem. Scrub cyber. Hey, I ain't no scrub. Because Scrub is a guy who can't get no love from me. And I can get lots of love from me. Thank you, Cthulhu. It's, I, it's very, it is very kind. It's very kind. I uh, appreciate it. What else am I throwing back here? Um, friends in Low Places is just good filtered draw, but I need money. 
but I like Leo. But calling in favors does nothing. Well, if I pull an ally and then call it... Oh, you're, you're the scrub. Oh, okay. Well, you can get no love from whoever you want. Hey, it's Gregory Gray and Michael Lee. More likely to draw the intel. 250 miles! Holy shit. Just one action to move? Incredible. All right. Two shroud, one clue. Anchorage says, uh, action, choose a set-aside hollow, draw it. Limit once per round. Also, action, resign. I thought Alaska was supposed to be nice this time of year. Now get me another one of them cigars. Charlie Kane, probably. That's Charlie Kane for you. Two shroud, one clue. No bad thing. Um, first things first. I might... Oh boy. Oh really? Like it's the place is called To the North Pole Flower? That's hilarious. Okay, well I definitely I desperately need money. Um What can I do here? Friends in low places will actually it won't really do anything for me now. It's fast. Um sorry, yes. Charlie is versatile and prompt. So or sorry, his friends are versatile and prompt. So you can grab another criminal quickly. Oh, oh, just the North Pole. Oh, it's just, it's got this place in it called the North Pole. Have you never heard of it? Uh, I need money. Gregory Gry has money. Slap down Gregory Gry, try to pass a test. Uh, Michael Lee is a new ally of Charlie's who may or may not show up in this scenario. He's here, and I'm really hoping he does. Uh, he's a detective from Anchorage, Alaska. From the north to your home, uh, all mysteries investigated, or whatever. He's an experienced hunter, which actually feels really thematic, so I'm going to put him down first. Plus one intellect, plus one combat. Um, he's got uh, he's got a great reaction, and a, well, he's, his reactions, basically, when you successfully investigate, you can put a resource on him as evidence, up to three. When you initiate an attack, exhaust him and spend an evidence to deal plus one damage. So he can fight, uh, considering if he has enough evidence. Them symbols, though. Yeah. What I really want is to slap down Michael and Gregory. But unfortunately, I ain't got that kind of money. So we're going to draw a card. Because maybe it's money, baby! It's not... <laughs> Obviously, despite the fact that Charlie is eager to get underway and, uh, you know, and and terrified of what might be out there in the wilderness, looming over his head is the fact that he has a mission from the Foundation. He's already being hunted by the Coterie. He doesn't need to be hunted by the Foundation as well. Great question, Flower. It seems to be um, a person running through an alley with a tentacle arm? It's not super clear, to be completely honest with you. Okay. So it can't leave my hand. So, that's that. Second action, we're gonna drop Michael on the table, so to speak. He gives us intellect and combat. Last action, we're gonna investigate. Um... Yeah. I'm gonna uh, investigate at 2 to 2, but I'm gonna exhaust him to get plus 3 intellect! Five to two. And hopefully I can then put Gregory Gry down on the table at some point. It's going to be one of those, eh? Despite Charlie's best efforts, the people of Anchorage just don't want to speak about this strange creature. Perhaps it's been terrifying and hunting them for long enough. I'm glad I didn't use the fucking Eye of Ravens on this. Huh. <laughs> Excuse me, Flower. Technically correct, but... No, you're, you're right. However, Charlie is able to make a connection. A man who is listed as a private investigator, but when he sits down with Charlie, nods in understanding as he realizes that he's going to be hired for a different job. A hunt. All right, well, that is very unfortunate. Basically a wasted first turn. But I got a good enough ally down. So we go to upkeep. And we draw obsessive. Okay, well, everything is uh, 
Everything's coming out here. That's going to be... That's going to be... Um, that's going to be spicy. Uh, and we go to the Mythos phase. Four out of seven Doom. Yeah, oh God. Okay. Yeah, really? And yeah, he is... He is obsessed. Speaking to Michael Lee, Charlie is uh, just going down the rabbit hole of like what is this creature i don't understand how it could exist here what kind of species is it he does he's not a scientist but he is figuring it out um oh okay uh the, the ravenous grizzly oh okay, okay it spawns at the nearest wilderness location so this is uh michael tells him story after story of animals beasts that lurk in the great beyond and when Charlie asks him, what's the most terrifying thing you've ever encountered? Michael shakes his head and he says, other than that strange creature that no one can really make out? Probably a grizzly. Uh, the ravenous grizzly spawns at the nearest wilderness location, which is not Fairbanks. There's three Alaskan wildernesses. I'm going to put it down here. Um... It, hunter retaliate, but it cannot enter non-wilderness locations, thankfully. Ah, uh, while it is moving, it skips over connecting non-wilderness locations. Okay, so it can just fully hunt. It can just hunt through Fairbanks into the other wildernesses. Okay, so I'm going to have to deal with this guy, like, like, immediately. Okay, so there's a, so there's a grizzly. In... Charlie's obsession with learning from Michael Lee. He didn't even notice the time passing. When my turn begins, discard a non-weakness card at random. Gregory Gry. That was my money. No big deal. <laughs> I guess. Fuck's sake. <laughs> um, oh, we have Riastrad, though. Okay. We're gonna fast friends in low places. It's now fast, because uh, Charlie's friends are all versatile. Using his new connection of Michael Lee from here in Anchorage, Charlie is looking for any sort of connections he can leverage to move quickly into the wilderness. So I'm searching six. It allows me to uh, take criminals for free, but otherwise I have to pay a resource. Grizz grizzled. Oh! An arrangement in the sluices used in a washing auriferous gravel by receiving and throwing out the large stones. Oh! Flower, is that... Is that a word? Is that a... Is that a gold mining term? So I've played the Yukon Trail, which was... I don't know. Was, I don't know if it's a Canadian game necessarily, but I feel like we played it all the time in Canadian classrooms, which was about the Yukon Gold Rush around the turn of the 20th century, 1890-something. Um, and when you finally get to the Yukon, you can, like, pan for gold or whatever. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I do know one of the things that prospectors used to do was set up sluices and run shit through them to try to separate the gold from the crap, basically. That's so interesting. Well, I'm not happy about this team, but if I take lab assistant, I can at least call in favors. Oh, God, it cost me a resource. Blech. And now I can't fucking play lab assistant. Um, ugh, do I even want this then? The grizzly bear is so named because its hair is grizzled or silver tipped. Ah, uh, yeah, it's commonly believed to be derived from grizzly, like awful. Ah, yoy. Okay, one action, two actions. We're getting rid of obsessive, not that token. Thank you very much. Third action, um, we are uh, going to attempt to investigate again. I think Charlie takes the time to straighten it. Grizzled bear! They're so different. The grizzly bear feels like, yeah, it feels like a grizzly murder, right? Or a grizzly crime. Um, uh, it can be flower. It can disembowel you straight up and down, so to speak. Charlie is floundering a little bit here in Anchorage. He knows very few people. Uh, Bonnie Walsh is off doing something else, but he's low on resources and he's not liking his chances of surviving out in the wilderness. We're going to investigate last action. 
two to two, but I'm going to exhaust my Kali to go five to two. Yeah, for sure, flower. Minus one. Thank you so much. That's a clue. Great. Okay, so we did a thing. Uh, enemy phase, the ravenous grizzly hunts. It can't... It can't enter non-wilderness locations, but it can skip over connecting non-wilderness locations. But if it moves, it won't get any closer to me. So it won't move then. Upkeep draws us kicking the hornet's nest. That does give me money. Although I don't really need to deal with enemies right now. <laughs> I don't know. Mythos phase brings us to five out of seven doom. Charlie finally has a lead. How to get to Fairbanks. Michael is able to hire a dog sled team. No, a truck. And then a dog sled team in Fairbanks. Man, we are in so much trouble. He's totally going to get there first. Mythos phase draws us splintered space. As Charlie begins his long trek to Fairbanks, one night he awakens to find a strange void in his hotel room. Attach splintered space to your location and test agility three. If you fail, take a damage for each hex treachery attached to your location. Fine. Okay, fine. Aha, okay, okay. So this would give me a damage. Uh, after this test ends, if there are exactly three copies of splintered space in play, discard them. Okay. Well, we're testing Agility 3. I'm definitely not going to pass, and I don't really care. So we're going to go 1 to 3. That's so bad. Okay, um... F minus 4. If you fail, choose a non-weakness card. Choose a non-weakness card in your hand and set it aside out of play as a hollow. Well, what am I not playing today? Man, I would love to put Leo down. Fuck's sake. Lab assistants will draw so many cards. I can't get rid of either of these. These are too good. Charlie's memories of Leo begin to fade ever so slow. Sorry, I should put it over here so I don't lose track. Um, starts to... Oh, and then I have to take a damage. I take a damage for each hex attached to my location. I'll put it on me. Uh, actually, no, I'll put it on my... No, I'll put it on me. As Charlie gazes into this strange void in his, in his hotel room, he starts to try to recall the name of all the people that he's been working with on this trip, and they start to vanish from his memory. We come back to the investigation phase. Again, what I really want to do is just, like lab assistant calling in favors, whatever, but we're not going to. We're going to move. Oh, I could choose a hollow and draw it, but I don't want to. We're going to move to Fairbanks. Fairbanks is the perfect place to replenish your supplies and research routes to the gold mine. Hell yeah! All around me, I sensed a queer coldness in the demeanor of my neighbors, my friends. Two shrouds, zero clues, damn it. Uh, reaction, when an investigator at Fairbanks draws a hazard... Spend two resources to cancel that treachery's effects and discard it. Okay, well, I don't have money. But what we do have is... So I should say I've never played Kicking the Hornet's Nest in this campaign, but I just want to point out what it does. Search the top nine cards of the encounter deck for a non-elite enemy. Spawn it engaged with you. Then discover a clue at your location and gain X resources where X is its health. Shuffle the encounter deck. Now, that does mean putting an enemy on. Well, great question, Flower. Reastroud the strange cursed spell thing could theoretically kill a grizzly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, crosshair. So enemy health values range from 1 to non-elite enemies? Probably from 1 to 5. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you don't draw an enemy, you don't get to do the second part. Which is, like, wildly frustrating, right? It's okay. We're going to venture. Charlie takes a deep breath and ventures out into the wilderness. Alaskan wilderness. 
the bleak splendors of these remote and lonely forests rather overwhelmed him with the sense of his own littleness. One shroud, one clue, the mountain stream. Crossing the cracking ice is incredibly dangerous, but you have little other choice. Forced, after you enter mountain stream, test intellect or agility one. If you fail, take a damage. Okay. Forced, after the last clue is discovered from mountain stream, put the three set aside outer wilderness locations into play adjacent to it. This feels very good. Very good. So I have to test intellect one. I'm going to do that, um, and we're going to use Michael. Yeah. No. Oh, man. I don't want to, like, commit things, because I feel like... Um, and I'm not going to kick the hornet's nest for one clue on a one shroud location. So I've moved twice. I have to test intellect one. I'm going to just test two to one. Elder sign, plus three. Ready an ally at your location. Well, I don't have any. So I don't take a damage. Charlie manages to avoid falling through the ice and looks to Michael for instruction on how best to cross the stream. They hire uh, some locals to take them across. Um, we're going to put the... Th after the last clue is discovered, put the three set-aside elder wilderness locations into play adjacent to it. So last action. Let us investigate. I have two intellect. I'm going to exhaust Michael to make it... Um, five. Minus two. Success. Clue. I totally should have charged up Michael Lee. I forgot. Um, so he's at two evidence now. Oh, I see what you mean, Crosshair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think especially because that's that. I think that's my thought. It's uh, kicking the hornet's nest is for non-elite enemies, and I imagine so. It's a good point, but I because there are some enemies specifically like elder gods or whatever that have like blank health or null health or whatever, which this yeah. yeah I, I like to think you just gain inf infinite resources because you kicked the, the hornet's nest so hard as a thought fell out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, we got the clue. Divide by zero. This ain't no mathematician. Um, put the three set-aside outer wilderness locations into play adjacent to it. Uh, where are you? The outer... Oh, well, that... Oh, God. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Uh, there we go. I assume they're all that way. Okay. Okay, that's my last action. Here's where things get tricky. In the enemy phase, hunters hunt. The ravenous grizzly hunts towards me. It can't enter non-wilderness locations, but it can skip over connecting non-wilderness locations, so it can hunt directly to me. And yeah, it does. Ooh. And it does two damage, which goes one on me and one on Michael. Um, as Charlie Kane ventures out further into the wilderness, he and Michael start to compare notes, you know, they're using the prospector's diary as sort of a bit of a guide, but nobody seems to know where this gold mine is. All they know is that the Thorn has an incredible head start on him, or on them. And then once they reach the other side, they prepare to load up, until a strange sniffing and growling heralds the arrival of a threat. A massive threat. A bear races out of the forest, straight towards Michael. I think so too, Flo Well, I have a I have a I have a thought, Flower, but actually I think you're right. Um so we have now a ravenous grizzly on us in the wilderness. We upkeep, we ready our cards, draw a res oh good. Bonnie Walsh! Bonnie! Bonnie, I need you! We go to Mythos. Six out of seven doom. Ooh, if I do really well, maybe we can clutch this out before Thorn takes it, but we'll have to see. We draw an encounter card. It's Splintered Space. Attach it to your location. Test Agility 3. If you fail, take a damage for each hex attached to your location. Uh, if there are exactly three copies, discard them. Well, 
I don't really feel like committing anything to this or exhausting Michael Hall. So. Not a hex bear. Not yet. So we're just going to test one to three. Okay, so I failed. I take one damage. Fuck. I think it's going on. I think it's going on Michael. Ay, oi. The, <laughs> the strange. Uh, th as the bear sort of like makes to attack them, Charlie and, and, and Michael, a strange kind of void in space opens up behind it, almost as if this bear isn't just a bear. It is, it is representative of something further, uh, which is horrible. Okay, we're back around to us. We need to kill this bear straight up. Uh, I could try to evade it, but I think we should just try to attack it. <laughs> Uh, I could... I want to do three damage. Which means I think I want to use Rhea Strad. Yeah. Charlie Kane. Oh, we have used Rhea Strad, haven't we? In Istanbul. Rhea Strad, uh, Rhea Strad. Charlie Kane, uh, stumbles back in fear and almost plunges himself into the icy river again as Michael desperately fires off a few rounds from his little 38 revolver. This grizzly is not going to be stopped by anything quite so uh, paltry, though. Oh, I am very sure, Flower. Um, Charlie Kane takes a deep breath, centers himself, tries to remember uh, the strange words he spoke in Istanbul halfway across the world. I'm going to fight... Uh, when you initiate this attack, add up to three curses to the bag. For each curse you add, you get plus one combat and deal plus one damage. So I will add two curses. This uh, means I'll do three damage. Should have brought an X, huh? Oh, Leah, you beautiful bastard. This is two, four to four. If I exhaust Michael, I go to seven. Seven to four. Nah, fuck it. I'm uh, I'm flipping the eye of ravens to go to start at six, and I've added two, so I'm at eight to four. We're using the eye of ravens, baby. The eye of ravens starts to glow and shake with a massive amount of energy as Charlie tries desperately to point it towards the ravenous grizzly. Ugh. Elder thing minus three, not a fail. Eight to four, done. So, two curses in the bag. We deal three damage. As a ray of light and pure red energy erupts from the Eye of Ravens, the grizzly roars once and then simply ceases to be. Charlie and Michael look around, confused. Where did it go? No corpse, no skin, no ash, nothing. It's, it's almost as if it never existed. We're going to move on. Uh, I would love to put out more uh, resources. Uh, hi, cats. Um, the cats are very excited. But we're going to get the hell out of this mountain stream, I think. The Elder Wilderness. We'll always go left, right? In the... In the dra 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 draughts? Drafts? Damn it, Scott, you should know this. You're an actor, for God's sakes. In the drafts of night that poured their silent tide from the depths of the forest, with messages from distant ridges and from lakes just beginning to freeze... There lay already the faint, bleak odors of coming winter. Flower! Oh, yeah! I love... Oh, man, for sure, Flower. I never actually finished it because I'm a terrible human. Um, Outer Worlds was also a pretty fun game, if I do say so myself. He streamed it, and he's in it, so you know he's going to be talking about it. This is from Algernon Blackwood, The Wendigo. Let's go. Second action, move up into the outer wilderness as Charlie races off. I, oh yeah, so Flower, not like as anyone, you know, important, 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 but yes, as uh, the, the VO um, work was mostly done in Montreal, bar a few famous actors, um, like LA voice actors, like, um, oh, for fuck's sake, Scott, get it together. Hey, Ash, what you playing? Ashley, uh, not Ashley Johnson, the other one. Um, Scott, Anyway, uh, okay, see you soon, Crosshair, be well. You can check the VOD and or I'll let you know what happens. 
out here in the wild. But yes, Flower, so most of the VO was hit. <laughs> Correct, Flower. The additional voices include, um, what did I play? I think specifically there's a um, piratey type who looks really, really, uh, really cool look on him that I was very surprised to be voicing. Yeah, and a few um, NPCs. Forgotten Outpost. While hardly large enough to qualify as a town, this small settlement feels like a bastion of comfort after days on end of trying wilderness. Four Shroud, one clue. Are we desperate enough to do this? I say fuck it, we're doing it. La <sighs> this is a bad idea. Last action, I'm gonna, but I'm so far behind Thorn, I gotta do it. We're gonna kick the Hornet's Nest. Search the top nine cards of the encounter deck for a non elite enemy spawned engaged with you. Come on. Come on, not a grizzly. That's an enemy. That's an enemy. That's an enemy. And that's an enemy. I'm gonna look at them all. Spawn it engaged with you. Instead of its usual normal, uh, instead of its normal spawn location. Whoops. So we've seen these paracausal identities before. Oh no, we haven't actually. When it engages you, set the top uh, part uh, card from your deck aside as a hollow. Don't want that. The coterie agent. When it is exposed, discard it. But it would just enter play engaged with me instead, so it wouldn't resolve concealed. That's a that's a that's a win. The red gloved man. Fuck no. Um, although actually, I could probably kick his ass and get a victory point. Uh, or the another paracausal identity uh, entity. I could probably just kick his ass and, and get a victory point out of it. Five two five. Can I do this? Yeah, flower. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Oh, non-elite. Non-elite. Sorry, very specifically. So, the red-gloved man goes back in right away. So, in fact, I have to... I, I can't take it, unfortunately. I will spawn the coterie agent engaged with me, then discover a clue at your location and gain X resources. I'll gain one, but better than nothing. Free clue as well. Free clue, you know. And you're, and you're right, of course, uh, Flower, that unfortunately Charlie might have just been a little too slow in trying to manage all of the various um, th goings-on in Anchorage, but he's going to do his best here. Oh, I could call in favors on Michael Lee. Because I return it to my hand, which means he gets cleared of all of his damage. In, or in, at this forgotten outpost, however, um, Charlie and Michael sort of set up a camp, as it were, trying to get their bearings, figure out which way um, the the abandoned gold mine is. We've run out of music. And an excellent point, Flower, an excellent point. So perhaps I won't do that right away. Um, let's have a look here. So Coterie Agent Concealed 2 doesn't fire. After it enters the shadows, place a doom. It doesn't fire. Reaction when it's exposed, discard it. It's never going to be exposed because it's engaged with me. Charlie, frustrated with all of the, um, with all of the, with, with all of the delays in getting out here to the wilderness, basically just convinces Michael that they're going to go kick down doors and find what they need. He starts knocking on doors, knocking heads in, uh, until um, a young man. Uh, leaps out of the darkness armed with a switchblade um totally caught with his pants down as it were in the enemy phase however he does a damage so I'll put that on me good question flower it says after you successfully investigate so yes uh is the short answer um but you know hence hence the wording so yes so thank you for reminding me though because kicking the hornet's nest got me a clue it doesn't count as investigating. But I got a resource. Upkeep phase draws me a card. Guard dog? Okay. I think we gotta kick this guy's ass real quick. We go to 7 out of 7 doom. Distressingly. Agenda 1B. Frozen thoughts. The frigid landscape fills you with a kind of numbness. 
At first, you dismiss the feeling as purely physical, a side effect of the cold. It is only when you stop and consider the feeling itself that it dawns on you. The numbness is a result of some strange influence. You are forgetting small moments, memories of the surrounding area. It's as though your mind itself is being hunted and fed upon. Each investigator chooses an ally or item in their hand or play area and sets it aside as a hollow. Well, I don't have any items, so I will choose an ally, and it will not be Bonnie Walsh, and it might just be Labis. I think it's just going to be Lab Assistant. Goodbye. Disaster. Agenda 2A, Eyes of the Void. Oh, hello, Graspy Loot! Well, really, really, really. I'm very happy to be in the company of such famed streamers like, yes, Yogscast. <laughs> Welcome to Doomed. Um, wonderful to have you with us. Graspy Loot, I can give you a basic overview of the game if you're interested. It's, it's, it's like super basic, because uh, it'll take forever otherwise. Or, and or, I can give you a quick, uh, no, legit flower, like for sure. I mean, look, it's a it's a living card game. There's going to be a lot of rules, right? It doesn't have to be, but there are. Or, Graspy Loot, I can just give you a quick sum up as where, where we're at in the story right now, and we can just dive into the story of it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah, of course you have. Sorry, Graspy Loot. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Um, oh, flower. No problem. Also, Grasp. Grass? Grasp? Elut? Is this Elut? Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. It's good to see you again. Where we're at in the story. Correct. Uh, Charlie Kane, the mayor of Arkham, has embarked on a grand tour around... Uh, grand tour, a venture around the world to try to figure out what is causing strange disappearances of things, people, and memories. Um, he's been so far to London, Istanbul, Havana, and many other locations. He's been seeking out strange artifacts known as keys and hunting down members of a strange group called the Coterie, which seems to be evil, except some of them aren't. He's found himself now in Anchorage, Alaska, where he is racing a uh, prospector, a Coterie member by the name of Thorn, to find a key before Thorn can. I don't like my, uh, I don't like my chances, to be honest, because we're, we're starting a little late here, but it is what it is. Charlie's already been attacked by a grizzly bear <laughs> and is now uh, kicking a coterie agent's ass. That's... Holy shit, Flower, is that true? Oh my god, Flower, I think you're right. Okay, we're back to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Graspy Loot. Uh, did I draw an encounter card? No, right. Agenda 2A, Eyes of the Void. As you explore the region, you cannot shake the feeling that you are being watched. It is as though a thousand eyes are staring directly at you, or perhaps through you. The surrounding forest is filled with a deafening silence. Six Doom. We draw our encounter card. Charlie, desperate for more power from the Eye of Ravens, desperate to be rid of this strange coterie agent, desperate, as always, for more assistance... Oh, for fuck's sake. The emissary from Yogoth. Concealed 2. Hunter. Massive. So, concealed 2. Wow! Flower, it's incredible! So, the emissary from Yogoth, which is... Uh, Yogoth is a horrible place, I'm sure. It's a 343. Hunter and massive. However, it has concealed 2. Which means, before I do anything else, I go and find its little mini card. And I find two decoys, and I shuffle them all up. I put one at my location, I put one at the nearest location, and then I put one at another location. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do that. The Emissary from Yogoth has victory one, and it says, after you discover a clue at a location with one or more concealed mini cards, if it is in the shadows, it attacks you. Fuck's sake, man. <laughs> Fuck's sake, you weird alien thing. What the hell are you doing? I do like this art. This is pretty cool. Because it could just be the sky, but it isn't. All right, well, um, we're not discovering a clue here, and I cannot be bothered to uncover this emissary right now. I think we're going to just be moving. Oh, no, we're not. We have to deal 
Charlie Kane feels the oppressive silence of creatures from beyond the stars. But right now, he's in a tussle with a coterie agent. I think he can t Well, Flower, maybe once he has a bit more staff in play, if you, if you catch my drift. We gotta beat this guy up first, right, Coterie Agent? Let's go. We're gonna fight. Um, I have two combat against one. Uh, I am going to exhaust Michael to give me plus three. Five to one. A skull minus X, the number of hazards in play, which is none. None? Okay, that's fine. So, you're dead. Okay, great. Done. Uh, second action, we're going to move. Third action, we're going to move. Because we're looking for the mine, and I imagine the gold mine is somewhere in the outer wilderness. Six shrouds, zero clues. Uh, the condemned gold mine is where we need to spend our clues. So, in fact, this is good news, although I might want another turn just to, like, put another slap an ally down here. And they call it a mine. Yes, I would say that for you, Grass Um, Action. Reveal a random chaos token from the bag, plus one additional token for each token on Condemned Goldmine. If you did not reveal any bad stuff tokens, gain four resources and place a resource on it as a depletion. Okay. In other words, Charlie Kane is now here at the Condemned Goldmine and is actively looking for money, baby. Which I do not mind. This so is the end of my turn. I can spend three clues in advance. It's <laughs> a good question, Graspy Loot. Knowing how Lord of the Rings plays out, I'd say the odds are pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Kane and Michael Lee have found the, the, the condemned gold mine from the Prospector's Journal, but are they too late? If I spend my three clues now, we can advance. However, I am very concerned about the fact that I only have Michael in play. Oh, serious. Oh my god, Flower. That was such good DLC. Fuck. New Vegas. We streamed New Vegas on Punchy. Plus, of course, I played it myself as well with a different kind of build. Um, holy shit, Old World Blues was so good. Loved it. I am not going to do this. Am I going to flip the Eye of Ravens back? What if it's an enemy? No, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Next turn, we put some more things down. Ah, God. Okay, yes. We wait it out, we wait it out. We found what we need to find. Enemy phase, there are only enemies in the shadows. So we upkeep into a hit and run. Now, see, this is interesting, because you could hit and run and then immediately call in favors. So you would basically pay two resources to put an ally into play, put it back into your hand, play another one from uh, your deck. But it doesn't feel very useful. We go to one out of six doom. Charlie looks deep into the darkened mine, condemned, of course, for the intense danger that is there, and draws an encounter card. A crack beneath his feet. A loud snapping sound. Uh, as if a twig, but amplified a thousandfold. Put Cracking Ice into play next to the agenda deck. Then, if our, there are three or more copies of it next to the agenda deck, discard them. Discard them all, and each investigator at a wilderness location tests agility four. Each investigator who fails must take a damage, a horror, or lose an action for each point they failed by. So the ice is currently cracking. Yeah, 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 flower, 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 please, 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 of course we can, of course we can. Come back around to the investigation phase. Fuck it. You know, I think we should just do it. Action, reveal a random chaos token. If you did not, re uh, plus one additional for each depletion token, fine. If you did not reveal any bad stuff, gain four resources. This feels like a good play. I'm going to do it. Uh, okay, hang on. This is, it's not a skull, cultist, tablet, or elder thing. So I'm gonna gain four resources and place a token on it as a depletion. Delicious. 
And then, we're gonna put down two more allies, baby. Bonnie Walsh and the guard dog. Uh, and now, we can rest a little bit. Charlie Kane. Uh, yeah, hell yeah, cursed gold flower, yes! Uh, actually, sorry. No, 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 I'm gonna do this, this is fine. Hi, uh, Max and Ripley. Everyone good? Oh, God. Alright, hang on. Before we continue, before I explain what's going on here in the mines, we're gonna take a quick break for me to refill my drink, everyone get some water, and I'm gonna get the cats out of here! Also, to answer your question, Flower, no, it did not, because... I'm not resolving the token, if that makes sense. When you resolve it as part of a skill test, it does what it says. But if you're just revealing a token for another effect, it just it doesn't do anything specific. If that makes sense. We're gonna be back back on Doomed in the Cursed Gold Mine in just a moment. Oh hi, hello. Welcome back to Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror, the card game with a focus on roleplay and storytelling. Charlie Kane finds himself in the wilderness outside of Fairbanks, Alaska, searching or hot on the trail of a prospector-like coterie member who is seeking something known as the Sable Glass, perhaps able to peer between dimensions. Uh, I am excited to report that despite the fact that the ice uh, around or outside of the condemned gold mine seems to be in difficult shape. Um, uh, Charlie Kane still ventures inside, and somehow, just the luck of the draw, he and Michael find a pure chunk of Alaskan gold, which sounds like a euphemism for drugs, but it's not, literally, gold from Alaska. Charlie grins and is thrilled that the... Um, sled dogs have caught up, finally, with his loyal assistant, Miss Bonnie Walsh. That's the end of the investigation phase. I still have my clues, so I can still spend them, but I'm gonna go upkeep first, because I think... a uh, Miss Doyle? Very good. I might flip the Eye of Ravens back? We go to two out of six doom in the condemned gold mine. Ah, of course. Another coterie agent. So, this one goes in the shadows. The Coterie Agent A. Uh, yep. It has concealed two. Which means it gets a couple of decoys. We shuffle them up. One goes here. One goes at the most, at the closest location. And one, uh, sorry, one goes, fuck it, over here. Let me shuffle those up. Flower says, speak as Avery Claypool commenting on Charlie Kane and how he and his crew are handling the cold of Alaska. All right. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a difficult kind of journey, honestly, Flower. Charlie Kane is not built for this kind of adventuring. He's not built for this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, time spent outside. Uh, he's sort of a behind a desk with a cigar kind of gentleman. He's sort of a back offices kind of gentleman, if you understand my, um, if you understand, if you catch my drift. But, he's gonna do his best. Uh, he's got, at least he's got Michael Lee with him and some dogs. If I can say one thing, it's, uh, Lan Yu, uh, sorry, whatever the dog from Edge of the Earth was called. <laughs> Elias dogs. Definitely got us out of a couple of tight spots when we were venturing in Antarctica, which of course is the opposite end of the world. Now, as a reminder, uh, oh right, Coterie Agent enters the shadows, place a doom on it. Now that's, I mean, that's just a total fuck, isn't it? <clears throat> as a reminder, Emissary from Yogoth says, after you discover a clue at a location with one or more concealed mini cards, if it's in the shadows, it attacks you. So, um, we have to avoid maybe getting clues at locations that have concealed mini cards, which for the time being is not going to be a problem. I'm wondering a little bit if Charlie has thought this through. He's let the forces of evil sort of build up against him while he's been uh, greedily scooping up nature's resources, but we'll have to see. Back around to Charlie himself, he's considering... Does he want to venture deeper into the mine 
and try to find um, Thorn, the prospector, or is he going to hang back, try to recharge his, uh, his Eye of Ravens? I think it might be a bad idea, but I think he's going to do it. We're going to draw the top card of the encounter deck and flip this card. Yep, see, it was a bad idea. <coughs> Charlie is used to making bad decisions. He's in politics. The worst decision you can make, he always says, is um, is the one is one you don't make, which sounds like sort of an oxymoron, and maybe it is, but that's what he always says. As a politician, the best decision you can make is the one you make after you get some evidence, but right then immediately having a decision is better than not having one however in attempting to recharge the eye of ravens so that it can help him out again with defeating something a strange warp is forming by the door of the cave paracausal identity the subject appears as hyperphysical distortion devoid of mass uh, it's a hunter 323 three, and it says when it engages you look at the top card of your deck it is a weakness, so we put it back on top. It doesn't become a hollow. I really don't like that, though, because I have to either exhaust every ally I have or deal it a direct damage and a direct horror. Not great. I think first things first, we're going to try to knock this guy, or knock some sense into this guy. Um, yeah. So, we're going to fight. Um, I'm going to exhaust... Michael Lee and spend in evidence. Charlie is using Michael's skills. Finally here, as an experienced hunter, he must have experienced something along these lines. The paracausal ide uh, entity, whatever this thing is. So we're fighting and it will deal two damage if we're successful. Now, I'm also fighting at two to three. So, Bonnie Walsh will ready Michael Lee and then I'll exhaust him again. Uh... So it takes me to five, six, seven, eight to three. Curse, not great. Minus one, fine. Two damage, knocks it right out. The best thing I can say about Charlie Kane, and it's not much, but it's something. He may not be used to this part of the wilderness. He may not be used to this part of the world. He may not be used to venturing outside of his cozy study with his slippers and his scotch and his cigars, but at the very least, Charlie Kane knows how to get friendly with people. And that's what you need. I'm gonna call that five minutes, uh, Flower. I'm not actually sure how long it's been. Uh, I hope that was fun. I actually, God, I love Avery. I love Avery. I love uh, Aussie dialect. And we basically just one shot an ident uh, a thing. A worth every ruble of it. Bravi! Bravissimo! Thank you, Flower. We can have a little repeat on uh, Tuesday, perhaps. You, can, uh, you can't pre-buy Method Madness, but like if you're able to drop in on Tuesday. On another case of the Tuesdays, Stryker is going to be investigating some murders in New uh, Zoo York City. Um, but of course, you can feel free to throw down and have Avery make a reappearance. Okay. That was that. So now we spend the three clues and we advance the act, finally. Choo to go. Yeah, we're doing it. Um, I might be very unhappy about having so many things in the uh, things in the shadows. Honey Chew, hello. Welcome to Doomed. Welcome and goodbye. See you as, well, when, whenever you're gone there. Wonderful to have you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Wonderful to have you here. Let's have a look at Act 1B. Negotiations. If it is an agenda two or three, shit. As you approach the condemned mine, you see from the broken barricades and tracks in the snow that Thorn and the Coterie have already arrived. Son of a... Before you can backtrack, two guards emerge from the shadows, brandishing shotguns. Don't move, one of them says. Read scenario interlude. Raw deal. I don't like where this is going. If it is agenda two or three, skip to raw deal two. Hi, Chu, I'm doing quite well. Um, I, uh, oh, that's so funny, Honey Chew, I love it. Um, yeah, no, I'm doing well, it's been a great day, uh, great food, great streams so far, and this morning was my first ever, uh, race, run, 
like I've been running for quite some time now, but just, you know, to improve and, and get better. And then this morning I had like a, I mean, a race. It was a fun race. It wasn't, it wasn't, I'm not trying to win. <laughs> um, and as opposed to my usual, like, running on a packed gravel track or whatever, this was fucking up a goddamn mountain, it felt like, with rocks and tree branches and shit. So, uh, it was hard. But, uh, so I'm tired. But I'm feeling good. Um, really, yeah, thanks, Honey Chew. So, th things are good, Honey Chew. I, that's, that's what I'm gonna say. Raw deal two. Goodness gracious, Thorne says, emerging from the mine. Put that down at once, you oaf. That's no way to treat guests. They snap at the guards who lower their weapons. You're too late, I'm afraid. D rather, just in time, depending on your perspective. Thorn brandishes an obsidian lens in one hand. Son of a bitch, as they smirk. Remembering the Foundation dossier, you ask if there's anything you can do to negotiate for the key. They shake their head. Afraid not, kitten. A key is in hand is worth, well, fortunes. Not that I would sell it for anything in the world. They clutch the sable glass in one hand as a chill wind blows. There's still time to make a deal. If you weren't completely daft, you'd have noticed this entire area is in grave danger. Something truly terrible stalks in these woods, the ultimate predator. In fact, it already knows we're here. The way I see it, you can pout about not getting your prize, or you can help me track my quarry. Do that, and I'll owe you a favor to be paid at a later date. Do we have a deal? The investigators must decide. We'll work with you for now. We can't let the key fall into Coterie hands. Right away, I gotta tell you, it feels like Charlie Kane. Th this is interesting because I feel like Charlie Kane hasn't been trusting people, but that he trusted S. Uh, Eche? What's her name? Sahim from uh, from Istanbul. Um, and he trusted Desi. If he doesn't trust. Thorn right now, he's gonna have to kill Thorn. He's gonna have to fight Thorn immediately, which is potentially a disaster. We'll work with you for now, feels like something Charlie would say. Oh yeah, okay, fine, like... It, well... Actually, ooh, Flower, you do make a good point. Oh, you make such a good point, Flower. Flower, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you think we should trust Thorn? Even just for now, to defeat this other strange creature. That's that's my question. <laughs> okay, I love it. We'll work with you for now. Brilliant. We'll have you pop some champagne when this is all over and uh, over and done. Thorn snaps his fingers, calling their cohorts to attention. I believe you have some. We have some work to do. The cell made a deal with Thorn. So. I feel quite strongly like the cell made a deal. Look at this. The cell made a deal with Desi. The smell, the cell, the smell. The cell made a deal with Thorn. Absolutely. All right. Uh, remove an elder thing, add a tablet. If there's already four, we earn uh, an experience. If there aren't already four for sure. I'm taking one of these out and I'm copying a tablet in. I definitely thought we were gonna be untrustworthy of people, but that's okay. So we add a tablet. There are now two in the bag, I believe. Put the Thorn story asset into play. Under the lead investigator's control, attach the sable glass key to Thorn. Stable side face up. Ah, oh, yay, we have a friend. Okay, let's have a look at these guys before I do anything else. Thorn, the one with the red cravat is a f this is an enemy there we go thorn the consummate professional is an asset null costed it's an ally so i can exhaust it for plus one two two just admit it i'm better at this than you after an investigator at your location sets a card aside as a hollow exhaust thorn they may take an immediate action as if it were their turn huge if true the sable glass uh great question um, Flower, I, th I mean, I might just be looking at it wrong here. It just, it looks like there's just, you know, something covering this part of their face. Uh, and there's, you know, hair over their eyes or whatever. Or were you looking at this side, maybe? I don't know. Thorn also has the sable glass. Shift, look at the revealed side of each concealed mini card at your location without exposing them. Flip this key to its unstable side. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Very interesting. Now, I will say, a lot of the unstable sides of the keys seem to say things like, if an investigator shifted this key. So now I need to see what happens. Thorn is currently the bearer of um, the, the key. So I need to see how keys work. Uh, so it enters a uh, stable side. While it is attached to an investigator, it can use the shifting the shifting thing, fine. Do, 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 do. While it is attached to a story asset, it may be shifted by any investigator who controls that asset in the same way. Okay, cool. So, I don't actually remember where On Thin Ice was. It was 33, so we're probably on page 34 by now. Just making sure I know where I'm at. Okay. Uh, and then... <laughs> Search the encounter deck discard pile and all play areas for all cards from the Crimson Conspiracy encounter set and remove them from the game. Okay. Okay. The Crimson Conspiracy encounter set, I think... Ah, shit. I should just... I'm gonna double check this. I'm pretty sure the Crimson Conspiracy encounter set is the three Coterie agents. But I'm gonna check because one of the downsides of not owning the cards, I don't actually know what uh, what any of these things are. Oh, uh, so we're going to find out here. Um, campaign? Uh, do, oh, God. Um, hmm. We're going to look up maybe Coterie Agent? Damn. Okay, so that's not working. All right. I have to assume it's just the Coterie Agents. Let's find out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab the Coterie Agents out of the... Ah, Conspiracy in red, I'm sure, is part of the Conspiracy thing. Coterie Agent B. We'll see if they have the same icon. That's how I kind of, like, know. Seeing shadows, probably. But we'll check. We will check before these, we remove these from the game. Of course. <laughs> ah, a ravenous grizzly. A classic. Paracausal identity. Cracking ice. Lizard space. Where is the... Coter oh, and one of the Coterie agents is in the bin, of course. And we're going to remove the one from the game that's already here as well. Okay. So Coterie agents, one, two, three out of five... Four and five for the conspiracy. Okay, so. Well, we're removing the coterie agent from the game, which means, annoyingly and weirdly, we can't remove any of the concealed cards because we don't know which are decoys and which are that. So they all stay, which is kind of vaguely annoying. Um, the conspiracy in red is part of that set, because it has the same symbol. And then I'm going to see what else would be good. I'm just basically looking for what might be part of that encounter set. Matter inversion, warped reality. No. What would be good here? Tenebrous eclipse, is it that? No. Figures in the dark. Maybe? Probably not. Nope. Seeing shadows is part of the figures in the dark set or whatever. Well, this I, I'm sure this is absolutely thrilling to the viewers right now. I'm literally just going through and trying to find um, a card that might be a part of a set here. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Apocalyptic Presage. Ugh. I shouldn't actually be reading these, TBH. But that's okay. Figures in the dark. I know it's not that one. Well, okay, so there might... The 5 out of 5 might be something else. Oh, maybe it's like the Red Gloved Man or whatever. Where's the Red Gloved Man, anyway? Hmm, okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know, and I don't know. So it's fine. Okay, but we remove these cards from the game. Great. Okay. Whew. Charlie Kane has managed to strike a deal with Thorn. Thorn, beholder of the sable glass, 
He's hoping to gain control of the Sable Glass somehow. He doesn't want to necessarily betray Tharn, who is clearly quite powerful. But if he manages to get a hold of it, great. If not, hopefully, Thorn will owe him a favor later. Um, right, remove them from the game. Great. Okay. And we go back. Uh, what did I just do? I advanced the act. Act 2A, if it bleeds. Thorn said they were trying to track the predator in these woods. Although the beast leaves no trace, you can surely scout the surrounding area before luring it out. Okay. Action. If your location has the wilderness trait, and investigators at your location spend a clue as a group, place a resource on your location as a scouting report, one scouting report per wilderness location. Objective, oh boy. Oh, oh shit, good question, Flower. Uh-oh, I might have removed the wrong thing. It says the Crimson Conspiracy encounter set. Rawr. Might have removed the wrong thing. Unfortunately, I don't know how this works. Crimson Conspiracy? Maybe I can just do this. Nope, that's not how that works. What I really want to do is look up that encounter. Oh, actually, oh my god, I know exactly where to look this up. As do you, I imagine, as well. Uh, uh, Crimson Conspiracy. Okay, no, no, it is. It's the Coterie Agents and the Conspiracy in Red. Perfect. Okay, good. It's gone. Perfect. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, Flower, you're right there with me. That's exactly where I went just now, because I was like, oh, of course, derbg. The ancient evils. Okay. Act 2A, if it bleeds. So, we need to spend an action and a clue at any wilderness location to place a resource on it as a scouting report. Objective. You may advance at the end of any round. Hint, you will lure out the predator when you advance. Advance when you believe you are prepared. Devastatingly, Charlie is completely out of his depth. At least he has uh, Michael Lee now. Like, like, at least he has Michael Lee. But other than that, uh, he is not in a good spot. Um... He is not in a good spot to draw out any additional, um, but he needs clues. I think I know what we're going to do. We're going to venture, because we need clues. So we're going to venture one, two. Oh, shit. Mountain Stream says after you enter Mountain Stream, test agility or intellect one if you fail, take a damage. It's so annoying. Okay. We're going to move once to Mountain Stream. Oh, man. Wilderness locations. There's so many of them. This is okay. This is okay. We're going to go one, and then we have to test Intellect or Agility one. I will test Intellect one, because I have two, three, four. Four to one. Great. Succeeded. And then third action, we're going to move... Yeah, third action, we're going to move up to this additional outer wilderness location called Hunter's Lodge. Ah, four shroud, one clue. When you reveal Hunter's Lodge, test Will or Intellect 3 to talk the hunter down. If you fail, take a damage. And here you thought the outsiders were the dangerous ones. Flower, th this is... I'm hoping to deal with that, honestly. I'm really hoping to deal with it before anything awful happens. Uh, so, we have to talk down the hunter. Will or intellect three, or we take a damage. Forced, when a monster enters this location, deal a damage to it. I like that. I can no longer exhaust anything, so I'm testing two to three. Do I bother committing to this? I think I just take a damage. Yeah, sure. Yep, we take a damage. Goes right on Thorn's face. Um, because F you, Thorn. So, basically... As uh, as Charlie rushes further out into the wilderness and happens upon a cabin in which they try to take shelter, uh, the hunter manages to blast a shot off, hitting Thorn in the shoulder, but they make it inside, talk him down, and are starting to look around. Perhaps there is something here they can use to prepare. As a reminder, 
The emissary from Yogoth says, after you discover a clue at a location with one or more concealed mini cards, if it's in the shadows, it attacks you. However, I have a key which says, look at the revealed side of each concealed mini card at your location without exposing them. I'm going to do that because I want to know if the emissary is here, in which case I could get it first. That's the coterie agent A, which will immediately leave play. And that's the emissary! Shit, homie. I mean, that is great news. And it's also a monster. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, Flower. I mean, there's also cards that say things like, you know, after you expose a decoy, take a horror, take a damage, whatever, right? So both enemies are here, which is hilarious, but... That's a great question, Flower. When you expose it, it immediately spawns at your location, which I'm pretty sure does not count as entering the location. Let's find out. Uh, if it is an enemy's mini card, it is exposed. Place it at that location. Oh, and then all the other mini cards will disappear because they're all decoys or whatever. So it's you're right. It's not. Um, it is not entering, but that's okay. I still think this is going to be something that we're going to do to try to get this emissary out of the shadows and onto my dinner plate. Now let's have a look at the unstable side. Beware of prolonged exposure to paradimensional viewpoint. Other side can see you too. Shift. Each investigator sets the non-weakness card in their hand with the highest printed cost aside out of play as a hollow. Then, if an investigator shifted this key, flip it to its stable side. Okay, that's not too bad, honestly. And I might just do that to get it out of my, to get it back on its good side. Charlie takes several deep breaths as he tries to. Uh, oh, I knew. Oh, I forgot about this. So upkeep. I'm trying to remember. I, I should have checked this first. Upkeep readies my cards, and then I draw a card. So now that everything is ready, the burden of leadership says, either exhaust each ally you control or deal it a direct damage and a direct horror. Well, Bonnie Walsh is taking a direct damage and direct horror, and the rest of them are getting exhausted because I don't want to lose them. Which is unfortunately very, very distressing. That's okay. I think we still have plans forgot about that, though. Mythos phase brings us to three out of six doom. The eyes in the void are watching us. We're only going to be able to scout, like, one location, and that's okay. Substance dissimulation. For each set-aside hollow you own, if there are one or more copies of it in your play area or hand, there are not. Oh, I wish, Flower. I wish I had a plan. <laughs> Discard those copies, take a damage and a horror. If no cards are discarded by this effect, choose a non-weakness card you control in your hand or play area. Set it aside as a hollow. Well. Um, I will. I'd love to call in some favors, so I think I'm going to put hit it and run aside. Even within this hunter's cabin, this brightly lit, warm place filled with a crazed man with a hunting rifle, the strange feeling of, of, of memories being pulled from his mind continue as uh, Charlie Kane, we come right back around, tries to prepare for what they think is going to happen. Hi, uh, Max. I think first action, we're going to call in some favors. Choose an ally you control, return it to your hand. I'm going to return our good friend, Bonnie Walsh, to my hand. Then, search the top nine cards of your deck for an ally and play it. Reducing its cost by three. Okay, well, there's only one, so I'm going to play it. But it's free. Thorn does not take up an ally uh, slot, so we're, we're Gucci. The art student enters play. I discover a clue. I will choose not to discover a clue. I will choose to expose a mini card at my location. 
and then remove all of the other mini cards because they're all decoys. Or coach reagents spawning the emissary right here in front of me. Hello, Requiem. Welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. Um, I realize now, Flower, I've made a terrible mistake because everything is exhausted and I'm in big, big trouble. Ugh. But actually, well, I don't know. We could try to evade it, maybe. Hmm. Hunter and Massive. So, uh, Requiem, hello, good evening, welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. Charlie Kane, the politician, has finally managed to get a few different uh, uh, allies on his side here in his search for a key, known as the Sable Glass. Um, I'm actually going to do this right away while I remember. Ms. Doyle, I'm setting her aside as a hollow. Um, oh, hi, Max. Uh, unfortunately, he did not get to the key, the mysterious artifact, first. A professional uh, prospector and hunter known as Thorn got to it first. Thorn, unfortunately, is in possession of it now, but has struck a deal with Charlie, as good politicians are wont to do. Uh, or he, rather, Charlie struck a deal with Thorn. Um, and I just set aside a, a card as a hollow, but I can't exhaust Thorn, so there you go. That's too bad. Um, actually, so in that case, what am I doing? I'm not going to flip this to its unstable, to its stable side yet. I'm going to wait for a moment where I can get an action out of it. Charlie manages to get Bonnie to, uh, have a student, um, he, he manages to commission a report from a student that ha that comes in, analyzing some of the stranger uh, happenings in the wilderness. However, by doing so, he's drawn the ire of the Emissary from Yogoth. The Emissary from Yogoth is now engaged with us. It does a damage and a horror. It's massive, but it doesn't have retaliate or alert. So, while we wait for it to not kill me, I think we're going to kick its ass? No, we're going to take an attack of opportunity. Yeah, we're going to put uh, Miss Doyle into play. Hell yeah. So, a damage and a horror. One damage goes on the dog, so it puts a, do a damage on the Yoggoth, and then a horror goes on me. Yep. Uh, we're putting one of the cats into play. The cat that Charlie met in Havana followed him here, he realizes now. Not just any cat. This is a, a, a talking cat. A cat from the dreamlands. Oh, Saren, I... Okay. Saren, there's three cats under here. One of them is Ella, one of them is Ripley, and one of them is Max. Here we go. In play. Augur. That is Max. Look at that. Look at that little cutie. Look at that little cutie. Um... Okay, shuffle the other two into my deck. While we wait for it to not kill me, we're gonna kick its ass. Biff. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, that sounds about right. This is Max for sure. Look at this little dude. Uh, okay, cool. So, Charlie has managed to continue his deal with the Cat General of Ulthar. The Cat General of Ulthar, Miss Doyle, um... Perhaps looks like a normal, somewhat intelligent uh, orange cat, but Charlie knows better. This creature that can speak English is from a place known as the Dreamlands, which is, of course, a, a dimension parallel to ours in which uh, the stuff of dreams is reality. <laughs> Only in a Charlie Kane deck, by the way. Dogs and cats fighting side by side. Miss Doyle expressed to him in Havana that um, the Dreamlands are also under threat, from these strange paradimensional identities, and therefore, you know, he's gonna have to do something. I mean, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, good point, Flower. They all say, <clears throat> action, exhaust or discard the thing to investigate, fight, or evade, and then you can either investigate or fight or evade at a five, or discard it for it to be automatically successful. Oh, Requiem, always and forever. The Dreamlands are here, baby. Last action, I think. 
do we fight or evade? I think we fight. Try to put an extra damage. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, no, 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 we just did... Yeah, 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 we try to fight, because I want damage to go on the guard dog. Oh, shit. I really hope not two, Flower. It's gonna get awkward. We're gonna fight two to three. Um, there's not much I can do. Augur can be exhausted to go to four. Art student to five. Miss Doyle to seven. Seven to three. Skull minus X. X is the number of hazards in play. What was that? One? Literally, so that's fine. The fight is successful. The cats leap at what appears to be nothing, hissing and clawing, until Charlie rushes over to Thorn and asks him to point that strange sable glass and suddenly reveal to them a world beyond imagining, massive creatures floating in the way that stone does not. It's a, it's a bastardized quote from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, we go to the enemy phase. In the enemy phase, the emissary from Yogoth hits us, does a damage, which I put on the guard dog, which then puts a damage back on the emissary. And a horror on me. This is fine. This is okay. I'm still not happy about it, but it's okay. We go upkeep. Oh, motivational speech. Well, shit, dude. <laughs> a little late for that. <laughs> Actually, maybe I could play over the art student. Uh, and then we go to the Mythos phase. Four out of six Doom. Charlie is lost amidst a sea of, like, horrible, strange beasts. Cats leaping at nothing. While all the while, Thorn is urging him to scout the area for an even bigger beast. Something that will truly horrify him, he says, with a hint of irony. Snowslide. Test agility three. If you fail, uh oh, you and each asset with health you control takes one direct damage. Well, that is gonna be nasty as hell. That's gonna wipe my board. That's gonna wipe my board. I need to pass this test. Um, ooh, doggy. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't. Oof. So we're testing one to three. Oh, I don't like this. Two. Three, four, with Augur, four to three. Yeah. Oh, Flower, I didn't know we were going to be going north. <laughs> Basically, Sarah, and he's like, don't worry, I can motivate anyone to do anything. Isn't that right, Bonnie? Yes, sir, of course you can. Uh, we'll exhaust um, Thorn as well? Yeah, fuck it. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Five to three? Seven? Whew, okay. Minus two, minus five if the void chimera is at your location. Well, that's that's okay. We, we, so the prospector, the hunter in the cabin screams, snow slide! Uh, and they all take cover. But thankfully, nothing comes of it. It slides past the cabin, but they are able to still leave. Okay, I don't like my board state here, but that's okay. We're going to fight the Emissary from Yogoth and try to destroy it. Or... Yeah, first action. I'm going to play Motivational Spe- Oh, even better! I'm going to play Motivational Speech, which is a parlay to play Bonnie Walsh over the art student. Hell yeah with my bare hands! Bare hands. Um. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not looking great for our heroes here, but... That strange beast from outside continues... Uh, exactly, Saren. Bare hands! Um. Charlie marches into the back room and orders Bonnie Walsh up. We've been through so much together, Miss Walsh, you and I. We can still do this. We can we can defeat these strange creatures. We can figure out what's going on. Second action, we're gonna fight the Emissary. Um, I have two combats. I'm gonna exhaust Michael Lee to go to two, three, four, five, and exhaust the guard dog to go to seven. 
done. Defeated, victory won. Basically, he instructs um, Bonnie. Uh, he inst while he's instructing Bonnie, he calls for all of the fighters in the cabin to take up arms. Thorn, Michael Lee, Miss Doyle, although the others do not understand that the cat is anything other than just a cat. And he screams at them to fire up into the void and drives off the mysterious creature. Last action. Um, I can guess I'm going to try to get this clue. It's, uh, I have two intellect. I'll exhaust Bonnie to ready Thorn, which brings me up to a five. Already Michael. And then I'll exhaust Michael. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. Success. Get a clue. I don't have an action left to uh, scout this location, unfortunately, but... It is what it is. Next round we'll be able to scout, and I guess I don't really know what else we're gonna do. Enemy phase, no enemies. Upkeep. We draw a card and gain a resource. It's money! Which I no longer need. We have so many allies. Oh, I should've, oh man, I should've augured for the intellect. It's fine, it's fine. Five out of six doom. Finally, things are back under control. The strange beast in the sky has vanished. Charlie has his allies. He's made a plan. They're going to scout the area immediately around the hunter's lodge. And then he's going to try to draw the creature out to fight it. Oh, uh, I successfully investigated, so I'll place a resource on Michael Lee. Matter inversion. Uh, attached to an outsider enemy. There are none, so I will surge it into grizzly bear. It spawns at the nearest wilderness location, which is absolutely here. The monster has entered this location. I I have to check this out now. Enter. Versus... Right. Thank you, flower. Enters... Location? Oh! Well, that's... What do you mean it isn't a monster? Look at this thing! You're not wrong, flower. Thank you. Well, a roar from behind them startles Charlie out of, uh, out of what he was thinking, and he scrambles um, to find his way his, to find his way back. Uh, in an attempt to scout the, the wilderness around the, um, the hunter's lodge, he's come face to face once more with a beast that looks distressingly similar to the one uh, that he's already fought. Um, I am going to flip the sable glass because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. Then I'm going to exhaust thorn so I now have an immediate action. That immediate action I believe is going to be to evade this grizzly bear. No, 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 not at all, Flower. No, 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 don't, don't worry about it. We're going to evade um, one to two. I will exhaust Augur to go to three, Miss Doyle to go to five, five to two. Okay, evaded. So basically, Thorn manages a shout to alert uh, Charlie, who ducks back into the cabin in the nick of time as the grizzly roars and pads around outside. This isn't great, team. First real action. We're going to spend a clue to place a resource on my location as a scouting report. Beep. Uh, and then I think I'm just going to get out of here. Feels good. Third action, we're going to move. I have to test intellect one, and if I fail, I have to take a damage. So I will <clears throat> exhaust Michael Lee to go to five. Good. Michael once again directs them across uh, the stream. And then we'll move on to Fairbanks. 
which feels okay. There are no ready enemies. The ravenous gri grizzly is ravenous, and it is hunting, but it will be kept at bay for now. As Charlie Kane draws his trusty 45, as he ventures back into Fairbanks, he realizes they might need a little more firepower. It's now the end of the round. I'm not ready, but, you know, I, I can't wait around forever, so we're going to advance when I believe I'm prepared. I mean, I'm not prepared, but, like, I, I'm not going to go get more clues and, like, do more shit, so we're just going to advance. Act 2B, The True Face of Terror. Oh, boy. After making what preparations you can, you wait around a campfire in the middle of a town known as Fairbanks. Your very presence in this terror... Oh, shoot, sorry, I have to be at a... I probably have to be at a wilderness, eh? Uh... Did this have a wilderness trait? Yeah, it did. Okay. No, okay, no, no, never mind. We're good, we're good. Your presence in this territory makes you prime lure for whatever awful predator stalks these woods. Soon enough, you hear a twig snap and see a multitude of glowing eyes watching you from the trees. Spawn Void Chimera true form in the shadows and resolve its concealed keyword distributing each of those concealed mini cards as evenly as possible among each wilderness location in play. Fine. For each location with a scouting report on it, you may look at the revealed side of the concealed mini card just placed at that location. So at the very least, that gives me a little something. Void Chimera, the true form, is a 444 with concealed four. It's a monster outsider and elite. Um <laughs> You cannot expose any concealed mini cards while one of Void Chimera's other forms is in play. What does that mean? Forced, after you expose one of its decoys, aha, find the set aside version of Void Chimera with the matching subtitle and spawn it at your location. Okay. So this Void Chimera, is, much like a Chimera of Greek mythology, is made up of thousands of different animal forms. It is a collection of all of the different flora and fauna that it has absorbed over time in the Alaskan wilderness. Um, this is good to know. Okay. Okay, so we have to resolve its concealed for keyword. That's fine. We are looking for uh, decoy, decoy, whoops, decoy, decoy, and void chimera true form. I don't know what any of these do. I'm distributing them as evenly as possible amongst wilderness locations. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm allowed to look at the rev uh, the concealed mini card. <laughs> Holy shit, flower! It's the true form. By having scouted the Hunter's Lodge. Very low. You have no idea. I mean, one out of five, right? Uh, pretty nice. By having scouted the location around the Hunter's Lodge, a strange well of energy presented itself to Thorn, who, of course, diligently reported it to Charlie, raising an eyebrow. They looked him dead in the eye and said, I think this chimera might be retreating to this Hunter's Lodge. Very lucky. Very lucky. Act 3A. Prowling. <laughs> yeah, well, that's less good, Flower. Prowling Nightmare. The shifting chimeric form of the paradimensional beast flits in and out of view. It is playing games with you, much like a cat plays with a mouse. If you can expose its true form, perhaps you can turn the game on its head and banish it once and for all. After Void Chimera true form is exposed, advance the act. Which hopefully isn't just going to be defeat this thing, which maybe it is. It'd be great if we had more evidence on Michael, but it is what it is. We're doing okay. Uh, that was the end of the round, so now it's Mythos. We go to 6 out of 6 Doom. Uh, and we advance the agenda as well. Yeah, so Flower, I think because it's four per investigator, I think that's sort of like the way of scaling it is a little scary, right? Eight health over two investigators is like ugh. 
three investigators, 12 health. Ideally, with more investigators in the game, you have more specialized people. So, like, with three or four investigators, hopefully one of them is really good at fighting <laughs> and doing a lot of damage. Victory one, though. Agenda 2B, the Heartless Mountain. During your exploration, you stop and look up at the majestic vista of a nearby mountain range. One of the mountains appears strangely damaged, as though a great fist has punched a hole in the mountainside. Although it's covered in a layer of snow, there is something ominous about the deep, empty pit gouged into the side of the rock. You wonder what horrible thing burst out of the heart of the mountain. As you stare at the impossible destruction around you, a faint buzzing in the back of your mind sets you on edge. You have a creeping feeling that you've forgotten something, or someone. Choose an ally or item in your hand or play area, set it aside out of play as a hollow. Well, shit. Okay. So I could put the Thompson out of play. Not the worst idea. I could set aside Augur. I could set aside Augur. I like Augur. Um, I don't really want to get rid of any of my other allies, and I'm wondering if this gun is going to be useful. I feel like it is. So I think we're going to throw Augur to the wolves. Look at all these hollows. Things that Charlie Kane has forgotten. Agenda 3A, Annihilation. The landscape around you is being actively devoured, stolen from existence and memory. A feeling of numbness spreads through you as you stare at the fading wilderness. An uncanny sense that you're losing your grip on reality nags at the edge of your mind. We draw an encounter card. Charlie knows where to go. He knows what might be waiting for him there. <laughs> what is she, a stray cat? Seeing shadows. After you fail a skill test while at a location with a concealed mini card, take a horror. That's fine. We're, we're seeing a lot of shadows these days, but I think we can handle a bit of horror. Money would be good so that I can play out this gun. <laughs> um, take a resource, drop the gun, and move. We know what we have to do, right? We just have to kill the thing. Take a resource, drop the gun, and move. Charlie Kane ventures into Fairbanks out of options and on the advice of the hunter he hired in Anchorage, Michael Lee, and the hunter he did not hire in the gold mine, Thorn, he purchases the biggest weapon he can find. <laughs> exactly. Graspy loot. Perfect. <laughs> So what does he, no, what does he say? Will you have plan? What does the guy say in Dark Knight? Ah, it's simple. We, um, kill the Batman. <laughs> if you're good at something, never do it for free. Man, I have not seen that movie in a decade? Uh, wow, I gotta watch that movie again. Do I need to watch that whole series, that whole trilogy? I don't know. Dark Knight Rises. Is it a good movie? I'm not so sure. <laughs> Batman Begins? Yes, that's a good movie. Oh boy, Graspy Loot. So Graspy Loot, I worked years and years ago, I worked with a guy over the summer who did a really killer impression of Heath Ledger's Joker. Um, so by watching him, I was like, okay, I can do like it. But like, I know he did a, the best one. And killer, of course, here is a pun. Uh, I, maybe, maybe. We've had our Method Madness for today's stream, but perhaps in the future, You never know. Let's move. We've got our gun. We're ready to go. Uh, we're at the mountain stream. We have to test intellect or agility one, and if we fail, we take a damage. Fuck it, I guess. Um, I have two intellect. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yep, yeah, good. No damage as we head back towards the hunter's cabin. We're ready. There is much to find at the horrible, horrible cabin. But perhaps there's opportunity there as well. Oh, shoot, I totally forgot. In the enemy phase, the ravenous grizzly hunts. Hunts towards us. 
and attacks. Um, this is less good. I'm gonna put a damage on Miss Doyle and a damage on Guard Dog, which will kill it. Putting a damage on the Ravenous Grizzly. Charlie Kane hunkers down for the night, noting to his friends that they are not too far from uh, from that cabin again, where they believe the creature waits. In the night, a strangled yelp, and then a roar. A, a grizzly bear covered in blood and a dead dog. So sad. Um, yep. Uh, that's us. So we go to upkeep. Ooh. Barney Fife isn't Bar So, uh, Requiem, is Barney Fife the security guard from Half-Life? Because I feel like that's a Barney, but I can't remember his name. And if it is... Love that. Uh, love that. Oh, hey there, Gordon. I'm running a little late. What does he say? <laughs> They're waiting for you, Gordon. In the test chamber. <laughs> Fuck, I love that game. Okay, right. All right. I, I played a bit of it on stream ages ago. Oh, the deputy from the... Okay, oh. Oh, my God, Andy Griffith, of course. Requiem. You're so right. Sorry. I t oh, man. It's been ages, but you're absolutely correct. Flower! Did you ever see my Bloodlines playthrough? The Dr. Surgeon MD played through VTM Bloodlines. Um. Ah! Uh, Bernie! From <laughs> Don't cry for me! I'm already dead. Terrible. Terrible Barney from The Simpsons. Barney Gumble? Is that his name? Focus up, Scotty. I'm really gonna need you to focus up. Let's party. Uh, we gotta, we gotta deal with this bear. We gotta deal with this concealed card. We go to one out of five doom. The ice is beginning to crack in the springtime air. Charlie is focused on defeating this strange beast from beyond and hopefully gaining a favor from Thorn. We draw an encounter card. Crip chill. Fuck me. If you fail, discard an asset you control. Well, sh shoot. Mmm. Not at all, flower. Um. <laughs> Graspy loot, please. I love Duff. <laughs> so bad. Such a bad impression. Oh, hey. <laughs> Fuck. So bad. Okay. Flower, I had such a blast. I mean, it's a busted ass game, but it is awesome. I really enjoyed my time with it for sure. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna use the Eye of Ravens on this bad boy. Flip. So we're testing at a six, six to four, and we're gonna exhaust Miss Doyle to make it eight. I really don't want the freezing colds of the Alaskan wilderness to strip an ally from me. That's okay. That is one, two hazards in play. I think we're good. Your Barney sounds more like that old man that wants to hang with Bart and Lisa. Oh, do you mean do you mean Hans Mole Man? No, he doesn't want to hang with Bart and Lisa. Who's that? Hans Mole Man Productions presents Man Getting Hit by Football. <laughs> um, I was going to say, don't test me on that Simpsons knowledge. Go ahead and test me. I'm not very good. Uh, I watched a lot of it when I was younger, as you probably can tell. What did I just draw? Did I draw a token? Yes, a skull. It was fine. Uh, we passed. Okay. Charlie Kane channels the power of the Eye of Ravens once more to heat himself on the mountain stream. What we need to do now, defeat this bear, and then... <laughs> oh, flower? Not flower, sorry. Graspy loot. I see what you did there. And I love it. That said, if I'm going to get cancelled for anything... It would be something else. It'd probably be for playing wild ass music uh, on the. Oh, fuck it. I don't know. What would I get canceled for? I don't know. I'd probably get canceled by like the consulate of Australia being like, what is that Australian dialect? Okay. Was that the end of my music? Yes. We're back around, baby. 
Alright, team. We have to defeat... We have to deal with a bear. Then we have to move on to the Hunter's Lodge, where we can hopefully find this Void Chimera. <sighs> okay. Alright. Charlie gasps as his blood runs cold, watching one of his sled dogs life torn apart before his eyes by the grizzly. <laughs> Isn't it just graspy loot? Maybe I don't want to talk about that, actually, to be honest. Um, oh, Herbert. Yeah, of course. Hey there, kids. <whistles> Whatever. Twerk it Tuesday. Well, well, well. We played club and dance music and had twerking. My little pony gifts. You could get canceled for that if you like. Well, thanks, Pukajutsu. Also, welcome to Doomed. Wonderful to have you with us. Um, I would be thrilled to get canceled for shaking my rump. I just want to take you all on the journey. I was going to go with ass, then I was going to go with derriere, then I was going to go with tukus, and then I went with rump. Um, woof. I have too many euphemisms for backside. Somebody get me out of my own head. Fukujutsu, it's so wonderful to have you here. Pook, how excited are you for W5? And more importantly, how excited are you for Kate's interactive sheets for W5? What? If you're here, Zenrobo, Kate, killing it with these sheets. I love that. Oh my god. Okay. Right? Okay, anyway, sorry. Uh, Pook, you're just in time. Uh, Charlie Kane, the politician, finds himself in the wilds of Alaska. He is uh, currently tussling with a grizzly bear, but then he's going to be heading to a, a hunter's lodge. Sounds nice. To summon a, a, a beast from beyond the veil of our reality. A classic. All right. Um, I hate to say it, but Charlie's going to reach for the massive gun he brought with him from Fairbanks. So I'm going to fight the uh, grizzly bear using a 45 Thompson. Um, bada, 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 bada. It's plus two combat. Deals plus one damage. I have two, four combat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Summon, summon, summon. Sorry. You're right, Flower. Sorry. Summon into existence. Uh, get it to reveal itself. Yeah. We are fighting at currently 4 to 4. I don't like 4 to 4. We're going to make it 7, 9. That feels good. Excellent. The bullets ring true, and unfortunately, the grizzly. Let's say it, let's say it runs off, perhaps, into the woods. Or it collapses. Dead horrible. That was the first action. The second action is going to be to get the hell out of here and go to the Hunter's Lodge. Next turn, I'm thinking, pull the Void Chimera and then kill it. Well, flower. I mean, it's 1920 whatever in Alaska. I don't, I don't know if legality figures into it. I'm all for strict gun control. Me, Scott, but you know, this is, this is twitch.tv slash Biff the Boss. It's not about me. It's about who I'm playing. And Charlie Kane, this guy, is not about the gun control, let me tell you. Yikes. All right. We are here. I think we're just going to... What are we going to do? Take a resource? What am I going to do here? Um, I just have one action left. I think I'm just going to take a resource. Take it nice and easy. Next turn, we've got a whole turn to pull the thing out and go to town on it. Breathes a sigh of relief as he heads back to the cabin. Alice Luxley, the fearless flatfoot. Not particularly useful today, but I'm thrilled that you're here, Alice. We go to two out of five doom on the final agenda. Charlie readies his weaponry, readies his soldiers. Thorn the Hunter, Michael Lee, the hunter and miss doyle the cat general as a quick ps poop just i just want to let you in on some of the insanity that happens here on doom whether or not you're a uh... oh that's true requiem i bet it's not yeah i don't remember when did it become a state 30 something probably right that's just a guess i'm great at trivia guessing <laughs> um oh shit okay i was way off all right clearly terrible at trivia guessing thank you requiem that's good to know uh Pook, yes, I wanted to say, right, 
Um, whether or not you're an Arkham Horror the Card Game fan or, or are interested in it at all, I just wanted to let you know I'm a politician. I'm currently allied with an assistant, an experienced hunter, uh, an, an NB prospector who's a member of a strange uh, gang of villains, uh, and the cat general from the Dreamlands. This is that kind of game. <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay, we're here. We... Yes, we are. We put our doom on, and we are going to draw our encounter card. Oh, no! It's the red-gloved man! Oh, no, this is so... Okay. Oh, God, everything's ruined. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, shit. All right. The red-gloved man... <laughs> Flower. Sorry, I know that's not what you're saying, but all I can think of is Obi-Wan Kenobi's Well, hello there from... Uh, is it Revenge of the Sith? I think it's in Revenge of the Sith. Great question, Requiem. I think... The, well, the crosshair would be playing uh, Leo Anderson, just off on the side with a big axe, just swiping things around. But on the board right now, probably Michael Lee, the experienced hunter. I wish the crosshair would play Miss Doyle, the cat general of Ulthar. That sounds awesome. Shit. So, as Charlie prepares his weaponry and his soldiers, there is a knock at the door. Strange. Peek out beyond it. Nothing. But this... Yeah, of course you can, Flower. Tekalili and all that. <laughs> Just beyond the door vanishing into the snowstorm that's coming up outside. A flash of red gloves. Uh, the red gloved man has concealed one, so I will do this. I will put one at my location and one at this location, which then means I have to shuffle. So I don't know if the thing I'm about to reveal is going to be the red gloved man or the void chimera. That is not bueno. However, we're here. We gotta deal with it. First action, we're gonna use our intel report to discover a clue, but of course there are no clues. I can use it to reveal a concealed card. <clears throat> Did you really think looking for things in Alaska would just keep you safe? Well, so the... the um, uh, the campaign guide says we haven't seen the last of the Red Gloved Man, and he's now followed us to the ends of the earth. The only detail I could remember was his gloves. Red. Red as blood. I'm gonna flip over this concealed card. It's a decoy. It gets set aside out of play with no effect. That means one of the things here at the mountain stream is the Red Gloved Man. He's moved on, but he's found himself uh, he's found himself a way of distracting Charlie from what is most important. Second action. Oh, hi, Cthulhu, welcome. Uh, welcome back, I should say. Good-ish? Exactly, Flower. He's the Faustian bargain. So, Cthulhu, it was a little slow. We didn't, we couldn't get to the, um, Sable Glass before Thorn did. However... Charlie decided he was going to ally with Thorn for now because Thorn seems quite powerful and the beast seems quite powerful as well. You'll enjoy this, Cthulhu. I managed to get one scouting report down because there were barely any clues left and I never went to the other wilderness locations. I put the scouting report here on the Hunter's Lodge where I got the clue. When I put the Void Chimera into play, I checked the location with the scouting report Boom. Void Chimera true form. It's very lucky. But where we are right now, we're about to hopefully expose the Void Chimera true form. So, not bad, basically. What is Sleepwalker's Requiem? I'd love to hear more about it. But I do love a good uh, cat assistance here, so... Yeah, noise! Alright. And we've got a gun, so I think we're ready to take on... I think we're ready to take it on. We're going to investigate my location... For Shroud. The hope is to uh, reveal this concealed card. So, I have two intellect. 
Uh, oh, sorry, it is my second action flower, and I know it's bad news, but I think we can take it. I'm going to exhaust Miss Doyle to go to four. Bonnie to go to seven. I think that's okay. Skull minus X. The number of uh, hazard treacheries, which is one currently. So, we reveal the Void Chimera true form. We cannot set aside all the other concealed cards because the Red Gloved Man is in play. Whoa. Oh, there's the other four Void Chimeras. Whoops. After it is exposed, advance the act. It's a 1992 movie, Werewolves, that fear cats. One of the werewolves being attacked by a giant horde of cats. I mean, that sounds kind of awesome. Requiem, would you say it's, like, silly and schlocky, or is it, like, kind of spooky in an early 90s way? Oh, for fuck's sake, what the hell is this? Oh, for- what the f is this? Revelation, put Outsider's Lair into play, move Void Chimera True Form and each investigator at its location to the Outsider's Lair. What?! Okay, fine, so as Charlie ventures outside, the red-gloved man's gloves vanish into the snowy distance. Oh, it's trying to be spooky, but comes off as campy in the 90s way. Mwah! Goosebumps, are you afraid of the dark? Those were made for kids, but I love that. Love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down Sleepwalkers Requiem. That's a great idea for a movie for me to watch. I'm writing it down so I don't forget about it, team. Where are you? There you go. Sleepwalkers. If you like it, you'll like it. Ex well, Pukujutsu is correct. Uh, this is absolutely correct. Damn it, Flower! Ah, oh, you should have warned me harder! So to speak. Sorry. As Charlie calls out into the wilderness, as he prepares for the strange beast to come and consume his mind, he turns around, snow whips up behind him, blocking the Hunter's Lodge from view. He turns back, snow, every inch of his vision is blinded, and he appears somewhere not of this realm, somewhere very, very different. While Outsider's Lair has no clues on it, Void Chimera True Form gets minus one fight and minus one evade. Okay, cool. I do like victory one, but is it important? Not so sure. Uh, uh, yes. No, what? What did I just do? We're, oh, right, right, right. Act 4A, last stand. Your prey has trapped you in its own lair. The alien beast unveils itself in all its otherworldly grandeur, looming over you in its myriad amorphous forms. The location where it was exposed is connected to Outsider's Lair, but not vice versa. So, grizzly bears can hunt in. <laughs> if the Void Chimera true form is defeated, advance the act. Okay. Well, it's massive, so it's at my location. Um, I think we're just gonna- I think we're just gonna blast it. It is not a wilderness location, Flower. Excellent question. So, in fact... No. So this, so, oh, you know what it is? It allows, um, it allows other investigators to get in. Right? That's what it does. There's a one-way connection from Hunter's Lodge to the outside lair. So if, outsider's lair. So if there's another investigator that got, like, left behind, they can still get in, which is good. If I got both these clues, I could deal, I, I would reduce the, the, strength of the Void Chimera. Basically, if we can look around for ways to weaken it. However, Charlie doesn't have time for this. I do like victory. It's true. However, I believe it is time. We're just gonna, we're just gonna at least deal a couple damage. If we can evade it next turn, maybe we can get some clues. I don't know. We could almost do three damage in one go. I could do three damage in one go. After an investigator at your location sets a card aside as a hollow, they may take an immediate action. I'm not sure what you mean, Flower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Ah, oh, yes. Yes. We're gonna... We're gonna fire here, and Charlie is going to essentially command all of his troops to, like, unleash hell on this beast. It has four combat. I have two combat. Two more with the Thompsons. Four to four. Five with Thorn. Seven with Miss Doyle. Seven to four feels pretty good, so actually I'm going to exhaust him, exhaust Michael, and spend an evidence to try to do three damage. Seven to four. A tablet? Shit. Minus five if Void Chimera is at your location. It is. So, we fucking dead. The lens. Oh, yes, the, um... Yes, correct, the Eye of Ravens as well. Okay, so we failed. There's no concealed cards here, so I don't take any damage or horror. Does it have retaliate? No. So I just lose a bullet as the beast basically morphs around the the battle and the bullets sort of pass through it, scream through it into the void. In the enemy phase, it does a damage and a horror, which I will put on our good friend Bonnie Walsh. <laughs> Sorry, Bonnie. And we upkeep into an art student. Okay. I'm not sure if I can, Flower. Look at the revealed side of each concealed mini card at your location. But I, there are none. It doesn't say then, though, does it? So I would shift, do it, nothing happens, flip this key. And then I would put a card aside as a hollow, and I would get an additional action. Okay, I like this. Flip. What does it do? Yep, flip. So now, next round, after I've drawn my Mythos card, etc., it will have reset, and I will be three out of five Doom, and I'll be able to get an additional action. The Paradigm Effacer. Well, I don't like this. Um, the strange amorphous creature blob, whatever it is, continues to shift and pull, and strange vortexes in space and time and memory find their way into Charlie's mind. After I end my turn here, I look at the top card. If it's not a weakness, it becomes a hollow. Then if you have three or more set-aside hollows... Ugh. Well, my hope is to kill it this round. So, that's the plan. Free trigger. Uh, I have to set the non-weakness card with the highest cost aside out of play as a hollow, which means I will exhaust Thorn and I can take an action. You're absolutely correct, Flower. Feels good. Okay. The action will be to shoot it. Then evade it and get some clues. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's not get greedy. Let's just let's just fight this thing. Just a cat. Just cat things, team. Just cat things. All right. As Charlie stands at the precipice of this strange, otherworldly void. Thorn draws their uh, strange kind of like almost shifting shotgun. And Charlie calls for another volley to be fired into the void chimera. Um, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, it. You know, it's a 4-4-4. I have four combat with the gun. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this multiple times, but we're going to try. Six, seven, eight, nine, and we ready Miss Doyle. Nine to four. That is an Elder Thing is a minus three, so that's a success. Two damage. And I'm just going to very quickly go one more time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with Michael Lee. Charlie Kane prays that they have enough firepower to take out this beast. Don't do it. Don't you dare, Flower. A minus four is a big, beefy boy, but it is still enough. 
The beast makes the sound of every single animal in existence as it screeches, squawks, and roars, and then goes silent. The killing blow. As you land a final blow, the shifting violent thing collapses into itself with a noisome cacophony and a sudden suction of air. As its form crumbles, the strange other world around you also begins to disintegrate, and you find yourself drawn back to reality in a rush of static and ozone. I exactly, Pukajutsu. It says literally every animal sound in existence all at once. Check which version of Thorn is in play. If the Thorn story asset is play, R1. Which feels like it might be good. A scent of ozone hisses out of the closing tear in reality as your surroundings come back into view. You are back in Alaska, where the chimeric entity pulled you up its, into its lair. As you stand up, Thorn pulls out a handkerchief to wipe slick, extra-dimensional blood off their sleeve. They cock an eyebrow at you. No, 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 Flower, I made that up. Uh, it, uh, you know, it's, it's for fun. Oh, yes! Thanks, Requiem. Can't wait. They cock an eyebrow at you. Perhaps I was wrong about you Foundation types. If nothing else, you know how to hold your own in a fight. Though I would recommend you reconsider your stance on my fellow Coterie brethren and myself. I do not believe I'm the only member of the Coterie who is willing to put aside petty differences in the face of such... In that moment, you sense Thorn's age and gravity. Such a monumental crisis. With that, Thorn smiles and swiftly turns on their heel. Pleasure doing business with you. Rest assured, I will not forget our agreement. They pat the sable glass in their breast pocket and stride away into the wilderness. Victory X, Thorn is the bearer of the sable glass. Update the campaign log accordingly, no problemo. And we'll remove the damage from Thorn as they vanish into the void. Where are you? The sable glass is owned throne. And then I think it said mark three time. One, two, three. I'm just going to quickly check. Mark three time, you may embark. However, before I embark, I will point out I just reached a different status report. Gamma. No, not gamma. Is it theta? It's theta. Sorry, my bad. Theta. As you head to your hotel room in Anchorage, Alaska, you spot a red envelope slipped under your door. Inside is a simple message. My people in Ybor City know about the new passphrase and know you're coming. Drop by when you get the chance. It's signed, Desi. Which means, team, the plan is to head back to Ybor City. Desi should be able to give us something. Maybe then we drop off this intel in Lagos? Maybe we just keep it for ourselves. Head on to Hong Kong to visit Flint, who is tracking another Coterie member, the woman with the red parasol. But for now, that brings us to an end to Doomed for today. Oh, I should say I earned three XP, which is added to the one that I already had. Yeah, oh, sorry, yes, Flower. That's the one I was, um... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I read Theta, which was Desi's thing, but there's also that symbol, which is maybe something else. Thank you, Flower. I wouldn't have seen that. It is Zeta. You return to your hotel after a long day of travel and investigation, only to find your room in shambles. Shit. So there's a red envelope, but it's also your room is in shambles. A grim feeling sprouts in your gut. Someone's clearly turned your room upside down in search of something, and you're pretty sure you know what. You rush to the safe where you've been storing the paradimensional artifacts you aren't carrying on your person. To your horror, it is empty, apart from a single red card. Reaching out to Foundation contacts, you believe you've tracked the culprit shit, one of four likely coterie sanctums. Perhaps if you're quick, you can recover what was stolen from you. Motherfucker. Choose the key- check the keys section. Find each of the keys whose bearer is an investigator. So that's just the red ruby- Eye of Ravens? What's it called? It's the Eye of Ravens. It's the Eye of Ravens. Okay. Choose one at random. That key has been stolen. Gather each of the enemies whose names match the you haven't seen the last of. Choose one at random. I will. It's the Red Gloved Man. This is the identity of the character who stole your key. Mother... Oh, he let me take the 
fucking thing in the first place. Oh, the red gloved man now has the eye of ravens. Oh, that is tragic as hell. Thanks for holding the eye for me, red gloved man. <sighs> in Central Asia, Americas, and North Atlantic, find Kabul, Quito, San Juan, and Reykjavik. 14C. You are now allowed to travel to these locations whenever you embark. Oh, uh, yes, of course, uh, Requiem. My, my sincerest apologies. I, I should have done that. I'll just shuffle that up really quick. And, oh, it's the Eye of Ravens. Okay, there are now four locations. Quito, San Juan, Reykjavik, and I missed one. <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> Kabul. The RGM takes. <laughs> the RGM gives? What does he give? Gosh darn it. Well, that is infuriating. Now Charlie has no keys, but two Coterie allies. Three Coterie allies, actually. He's managed to get Eche, Eche, whatever, Desi, and Thorn all on his side. This feels important to me. How important? I don't know. If we can recover the, uh, the Eye of Ravens from the Red Gloved Man, that is going to be delicious as we head back to Ybor City. We will see if we can do it. San Juan's right there. Maybe we'll be able to check it out. <laughs> Taylor doesn't like this. Team, I'm going to run because it's that time. Thank you so much for joining me today on Doomed. Tomorrow at 1700, uh, you can join us on RPG Clinic. Uh, whoa! Sorry, did I ban you by accident, Flower? No, I think we're good. Okay, phew, okay. I pressed a button and it was like, do you want to ban this? I was like, whoa! Um, of course, join us on the Discord for all of the wonderful, wonderful uh, streams we have coming up. Thank you, Lorger. Ah, Lorger Kane. I bet you haven't heard this one before. Stay a while and listen. Uh... <laughs> Join us tomorrow for Avatar Legends, the mirror scale on RPG Clinic. Super exciting stuff. We love this. We love the game. But W5 is coming. Maybe we'll be playing that sometime. Who knows? He said coyly. I actually don't know. We'll we'll have to discuss it and see when, when it comes out. But thank you all so much for joining me. There'll be streams throughout the week. The Discord's the place to hear about them. No, 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 Flower. You're good. You're good. If you can still talk, you're not banned. I just accidentally clicked a button and I thought I ban banned you. I'm a professional streamer! Thanks everyone for joining me tonight on Doomed. Wonderful to have you all with me. Charlie Kane goes on the hunt for more keys next time on Doomed.